Welcome to Free Talk Live. You are invited to join us right here. If you want to take control of the airwaves, you can. Our number here is 855-450-FREE, like freedom. That's 855-450-3733. We have the Discord on-air call-in line rooms over at discord.lrn.fm. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. And Stephen. And Derek J. Stephen and Derek J. Joining us from AnyPay. Yeah. AnyPay.global. And, uh, of course, we'll catch up with uh, with what's going on with AnyPay because there's some pretty cool, uh, at least new features that I discovered this week about AnyPay. So we can get into that a little bit later on. Also on the way, uh, the latest out of Venezuela. I did see a uh, video by the, the Dash folks this week. Showing off some of the the progress that they're making there in Venezuela. For listeners who aren't familiar, most of uh, the hosts on the show are pretty pretty big fanatics when it comes to cryptocurrency. In fact, that's what you guys do for a living. You run AnyPay.Global, and that helps local businesses accept cryptocurrency. Have you guys managed to break into the Venezuelan market quite yet? How how are things going there for for AnyPay? Is there any action? There are only a few people using it. Uh- from time to time in Venezuela. Where are the big hotspots for uh, for any pay right now? Thailand and New Hampshire are All the right. biggest ones. Then Nigeria is soon after. Also, Central Europe, Germany has a number of real places that are using it regularly. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I know that uh, for, you know, for listeners who are unfamiliar, you can go to helpmetakebitcoin.com, and that'll help you walk through the, the steps of getting started accepting cryptocurrencies. Uh, but like the, the Dash uh, Latin America people, it seems like they're just using the normal Dash wallet. I'm not sure like yeah. if they have a point of sale that they're even you know utilizing there to make things smoother or easier. Uh, but they've got organization. That's for darn sure. They, they seem to have a lot of people like on the ground there doing things, reaching out. I wasn't really blown away by the number of transactions that they were uh, they were touting, given that they were claiming 600 plus businesses that were taking Dash. They were only targeting like a dozen or two dozen transactions in a time. I forget what the time frame was. I don't know if it was per month or per week or something, but it wasn't like I felt like we beat that in Keen. Yeah, you know, it looks to me like <laughs> so. Venezuela is obviously in a, a pretty desperate situation. The people there, yeah. their money is failing, and they need food to eat. And people who have more around the world want to use their privilege to help the people there. And, and help them eat, you know, and right. do the things that they need to be um, self-respecting human beings who can feed their family and, you know, and, and keep their head up. Um, they're victims of the government, you know. So if people who see that in cryptocurrency are like, I'm going to send money here. And they, they send a lot of money there. And hopefully that will solve the problem. I don't, I don't know. I don't see it. There's a lot of people in Dash throwing money at Venezuela. And I don't know. It's yeah, helping. I don't think it's a bad idea. I think that uh, that a place like Venezuela, where the currency is being hyperinflated like crazy, uh, I think cryptocurrency, whether it's Dash or, or Bitcoin Cash or whatever you know we're talking about, I mean, obviously Bitcoin BTC is useless in a place like that because of the fees. Uh, but me- most of the cryptocurrencies would be very, very useful for those people because it will protect them against the ravages of hyperinflation. You know, you say that BTC is useless because of the fees, but I, I do talk to people in Venezuela regularly really? about what currencies they're using and btc is still among the most popular it's definitely number one and what they use it for is they buy it and then they hold on to it and then later when they need local currency they sell it Mm -hmm. just because bitcoin btc is more likely to kind of go up in value quicker than some of the other it's not that it's it's not going up in value necessarily it's that it's a thing that they can buy that isn't the bolivar right because it's just it's tanking in value constantly and they expect a fee. If if they're moving money sure. from one place to another, or their family is sending money um, from Colombia, you know, someone who has escaped goes to Colombia, works, and then sends it back to Venezuela. Right. They do it through a merchant who will handle the BTC, sell it on the the local market, local bitcoins there, and then give cash to the person in Venezuela. And anything's so better BTC. than the than the Bolivar. There's no doubt about it. But I mean, I just sent a Bitcoin transaction today to a Bitcoin vending machine to restock because uh, I help administer a couple mm-hmm. of the machines here in in Keen. And 
it cost over seven dollars worth of fees just yeah. to send a Bitcoin transaction. Now it was a little larger than a typical Bitcoin as far as the the number of bytes or whatever. But even the typical Bitcoin transaction these like today is going to be two or three dollars. Um, and if you're in a place like Venezuela, that's a significant chunk of your monthly earnings at this point to be able to do that. Which is why it's nice to have these other cryptocurrencies out there that work. Just as well, as far as you can send value from point A to point B with Dash or, or Bitcoin yeah. Cash, um, but it only costs a few cents at most, typically, to do to do those transactions. So hopefully we will see uh, greater adoption of these alternatives in, in these places. But that would be great. That's yeah. I think it, it's awesome what the people in Dash are doing in, in terms of educating people about right. the existence of another cryptocurrency. Because most of the people that that I've talked to who are using this for remittance, they use the family send Bitcoin sure. to a, a business, and then the family gets cash. They're using Bitcoin because there's like no local Dash. You know, there's local Bitcoins, and mm-hmm. you can. It's the biggest one. It's the one people know, and the people who are receiving the cash. Most of the the people in Venezuela, they don't know what Bitcoin is. They don't know anything about it. They're not using it. Right. They're just getting sent some money. We're in an awkward phase, right, where Bitcoin is in the news constantly, or at least it seems that way to us, right, because we're more keyed into the the world of cryptocurrency. Yeah. But it is definitely getting into the news. I mean, it was on 60 Minutes. I don't know if you guys saw that, uh, no. that presentation. It was like maybe two weeks ago. We actually played the audio here. Um, Anderson Cooper, who used to be on CNN, a former CIA apparently agent, um, he was the host of what was a 13-minute long news package all about uh, Bitcoin. Well, he was laughing at the Bitcoin pizza guy. I would say he was laughing with the Bitcoin pizza guy uncomfortably about losing, you know, 80 80- million dollars or not losing but spending what ended up becoming you know more than 80 million dollars worth of uh of bitcoin on pizzas and obviously the guy you know wasn't feeling good about that later really um i mean how could he not feel good about it everyone should be happy if if you like bitcoin or any cryptocurrency at all you you owe an enormous debt to this what's his name laszlo laszlo that's true but he learned the lesson that many people are yet to learn that you have to even if you're an enthusiast and you want to spend all the time, you have to save money. Yes, you've got you, to buy more if you can. You have to save Bitcoins always. And, and whichever one you're using, save that one. Right. Well, of course, back then, it was just this little you know trinket that not, you know didn't mean anything to most of the people who had acquired it. And there's plenty of people in, in our community, in the, the libertarian, liber, liberty, voluntarist, uh, anarchist community, who felt the same way. It was like, oh, yeah, what's this? Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, here, you can have it. You know, and like it didn't... You know, it didn't click for people, and I, it it won't, right? Like for most people, they're not going to catch the vision. It didn't for me. Like I uh, didn't catch the vision. It was Roger Veer who who did. He heard us talking about it on the air on Free Talk Live. Then he he saw like, oh my God, this could you know help take down the government basically. Like yeah. he he saw that crystal clear, and he put money into it, and he did hold on to it. Did and they then, bring that up in the sixty Minutes interview? Roger Veer wasn't mentioned. No, uh, in not the, Roger the. The replacement for state services of providing money. There was a comment where they actually interviewed a a Federal Reserve chairperson, one of the you know bureaucrats who runs the Fed, and they uh, they asked her. Anderson Cooper did ask her something to the extent of, "Well, you know, the Bitcoin advocates say their their form of money is better," and he kind of made a good summary of like why Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies are better than the government money system. And he gave her a chance to respond to that. And all she really had to say was, well, the government backs our money. I mean, she really had nothing else besides, well, FDIC, government, people trust us. Good. You know, that's all she had. She had no (laughs) argument whatsoever. And they only really gave her just a short moment. So it really... You could look at the package as mostly in favor of crypto, at the very least, not right, like particularly nasty. In favor nasty. of crypto or in favor of BTC? They were talking about, I mean, obviously the history of Bitcoin, but I don't, I think they mentioned cryptocurrencies quite a few times. Okay. Uh, just sort of generally during Interesting. that. Interesting. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a good piece by mm. the mainstream media. 60 minutes, you know, that's a big deal. 855, 450 free. We can talk about Venezuela and what's going on and how life is getting more difficult, even for criminals there. Coming up. This is Free Talk Live and you 
can take control of the airwaves here if you want and bring up anything, though we've got the latest from Venezuela on the way, the absolutely dire, horrible situation that uh, those people, millions of them, are living in. Uh, as we speak, in the studio tonight, it's Ian. And Derek J. And Steven Zeiler. And you guys are from AnyPay. As I mentioned earlier, it is the place for local business owners to go uh, to get set up wherever you are on the planet. Um, how many currencies do you guys support? Not crypto, but like the fiat 168. ones. 168. I didn't even know there were that many currencies I in know. the world. Isn't that surprising? <laughs> we wow. to support all of the them. The question is, will there be more or less in the future? Yeah. Hopefully fewer fiat currencies i'd love to see those die out um because cryptocurrency is awesome and i'd like to see more because like what if there's a virginia currency and a utah currency and but fiat yeah why not i mean why you know why advocate for more of those it's not helping people i would rather have a california bill than a (laughs) dc bill i'd rather have like an apple bill like or a Disney, a Disney currency oh, or stuff, yeah. you know. They, Disney has that. They've got, like, Disney bucks or something. You can spend them. We don't support Disney bucks yet. No. Nah, We've got... Not, not yet. So we got work to do. Well, the only problem is you could only do that at Disneyland, and that's, you know, the, what a private currency does. Is it's just... Well, it's like a coupon. You, you know, know AnyPay is used at an amusement park in I Germany. Know. In <laughs> like Austria. In Vienna. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Is that newish? Like, when did that they start? They didn't Last tell us year. anything about it. They just started up wow. using it, you know, as anyone can. You know, there's no... How'd you find out? I started seeing some of these invoices. I was like, what's going on? And they put here? in their and email they, address and we looked it up. They added themselves ah. to the map. Okay. So you can add yourself to the map. This this app says, you know, do you want people to be able to find you yeah. if they want to use cryptocurrency? When you're setting up your, your business. Yeah. And it's like yeah. a restaurant in an amusement park. Huh. Wow. <laughs> well, if you ever go to Germany, you'll know where uh, to go. Yeah. I can't wait. Right. We have to go. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> well, and earlier today, a guy who rents boats in Cape Cod. Mm-hmm. Got set up with any pay. No. Awesome. He he's been saying he accept on like on the highway. He has this sign that says I accept Bitcoin and Litecoin. Yeah. He says no one ever driving by pulls over. Well, I mean it's like I was saying earlier. We're still in the early days of this. I mean I understand you know people want things to go faster, and I think we all would would love to see adoption all of a sudden shoot up, and maybe at some point we'll hit whatever point of you know saturation where you know the adoption curve starts to really go um, northbound. And I don't know how long that's going to be. Nobody really does. We will. Derek's mother the other day bought like a hotel and plane tickets with bitcoins. Her first time. Yeah. Can you believe it? All on her own. I did not coach her through this. She called me and told me that she had just booked a resort with bitcoin. So wait, she already had bitcoin that you'd given her or something? Or like where did she? Yeah, she's had bitcoin. So she's been holding on to it? That's yeah, cool. she's been using she's been using Bitcoin with me holding her hand for years. Right, but now now she did it all by herself. She just booked it. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, she was really proud. I mean, she's in her sixties. Yeah, most people listening to this, I don't know, but well, one of the first um, companies in Keene that I think you might have even helped set up, uh, Roberta down at Corner News. Yeah, um, she a couple of years ago, or like a year or two ago, she told me that she she did her uh, whole vacation with with cryptocurrency. She like bought her hotel and, you know, when I forget which website she went to, but you know, spent her crypto on her vacation and it was like this crypto made her vacation possible, you It know? feels really good. Yeah. And also about these people who want crypto customers or maybe you're out there and you you would accept Bitcoin, but people aren't coming to you asking to use it. This guy had a big sign on the side of the road. No one ever stopped. Mm. But if, if his business is on the map that yeah. says, oh, we take Bitcoin, then people will go to you. They will find you. become you. a destination. Yeah. If you become a destination. Right. Exactly. And the map looks good. How can people go in? Anypaymap.com. Now, why did you decide to register a separate – I just noticed you did this recently because it used to be – it still is, I think, map.anypay.global. Yeah, what a mouthful. He it's thinks the dots are too much. Yeah. He thinks Isn't he could be right. Dot dot com is the only Are way. you kidding? That's people, not real. People don't even know that dot .global <laughs> is, is a an website. internet website. Like our website it's is anypay.global. Yeah. Uh, who wants to go to that? I don't even want to go to that. <laughs> but it, anypaymap.com is where you can see the map of all the places. No, you're right. Pay. With all the weird, um, unusual domain names now that they have, the TLDs as they call them, the dot .whatevers, um, I, it would be interesting to see like polling results to see how many people recognize those things as websites like we do, but we're internet people like 
when you're putting that on a, an advertisement on a com- television commercial, what percentage of the TV audience you know knows that Edge dot app or AnyPay dot global or you know one of these unusual dot everyone dot will know eventually. I think it's totally lost right now. It's yeah, lost in the about, fuzz. I wonder about that. Y- yeah. Dot io. It's just a way for these um, <laughs> registrars or whatever to, to, to make, make an money. extra buck. Yeah, they're right. like, well, yeah, we'll, we'll sell you that nice, juicy right. domain. Well, dot .cash is pretty fun. Yeah, dot that's .cash is one. cool. I mean, there's I, there's some that I really like. I mean, ForkFest.Party, that's a cool domain. Yeah, that's a cool dot domain. .party. You yeah. know, that, that ForkFest.Party, people like it, and I think they understand to go to it, and it's good. Well, I mean, but again, ForkFest is likely going to a, a appeal to somebody who has some understanding of the internet because this is an internet migration you know this the reason why the three of us are here in in new hampshire is because of the migration of liberty people that has been coming here for well over a decade now i mean you kind of had to be keyed into the internet in the first place to even hear about this so we're still marketing mostly to i would say well connected internet people for me it was youtube videos of pork fest mm-hmm. and people giving talks at very early pork fests and that going right. on the internet and i found out and didn't you meet him at pork fest i did meet him yeah. at pork fest many years Wait, later pork fest not fork fest oh pork what did, fest. what did i say pork fest the porcupine freedom festival yeah, yeah. the new hampshire freedom right. festival and it worked out that's one of the best things it worked that's ever out come. you yeah. could say that <laughs> yeah. yeah it's one yeah, of the best things that's come out of that we're hey, a we good got, partnership we got sarah on the line here she's in new mexico sarah you're on free talk live hello so I just want to bring up again that, you know, I think New Mexico, our state, would be running a lot better if we had, like, full-time um, salaried and full-time, um, you know, extended, uh, you know, representatives in our state. Oh, you want them to work constantly you, the, because New Mexico has a limited period of time. Is it once every two years in New Mexico? Do you know, Sarah? So, uh, I, you know, I think I think we are the one with the, like, the, the least amount of sessions, like one month, one year, and that's financial. So you want them in there making the laws week. all the time. Well, she's right. The state, Sarah, you're totally right. The state would work more and better if they were paid more. The thing is that actually the state is bad and we're <laughs> going to bankrupt it so that they don't work at all. About. Yeah, what I'm talking about, about Sarah, is that well, we don't want you your you state and we're going to bankrupt it. We're going to remove its source of funding and control and it's going to lose the rest of its tiny bit of legitimacy that it has. And you're going to have to but find yeah, a new who, hobby. Who, Name other states who has a one month session one year and two month session the next yeah, year. Yeah, see, Sarah, we we're almost like- there already. We are winning so hard <laughs> with your state. Look, it'll you, be so easy to squish it out of existence. It's basically done. It's over, Sarah. You might as well just forget about it. The state <laughs> in New Mexico, we've won the the battles that you didn't even know. We've there's won. Been, you just haven't figured it out yet. There's been a battle going on to destroy the state of New Mexico, and we're winning, and it's almost over. So, might as well forget about it. Thanks for the call, Sarah. <laughs> Toll free number here, 855 450 free. She didn't know what to say to that. That was awesome. 855 450 3733. Somebody clipped that on uh, on Twitch. It was pretty good. <laughs> 855 450 free. You can join us here and take control of the airwaves. Bring up whatever you want. It is Free Talk Live. I'm crazy about My Magic Mud. This is the most important oral care product created this millennium, and I'm not kidding. We all have different opinions on politics and issues, but we all have mouths. And I want yours to be as clean as possible, with teeth as bright as they were meant to be. I will never be without My Magic Mud. It's a little surprising, but man, does it work. If you only listen to one thing I say ever, go to MyMagicMud.com and get 20% off with code FTL. MyMagicMud.com, code FTL. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You're invited to join us here if you want. You can take control of the airwaves. We've got Venezuela to talk about on the way here tonight. What's life like? Because we've talked a lot about Venezuela over the last several years here on Free Talk Live and you know, read many a uh, news story about how difficult life can be uh, for the folks that are trying to live there. 
and losing weight along with, you know, not being able to get the food that they need or like basic medicines and things like that. But what's life like for the criminals in Venezuela, the people who live off of the efforts of others by robbing them and things like that? Uh, There's an interesting story that the AP put together about that. We'll share it with you coming up here. uh, It's Ian, Stephen and Derek in the studio tonight. And also I did mention in just the last segment, Fork Fest, it's coming up. In fact, three weeks from today, it'll be over. So it's going to be here quickly. Uh, We want you to join us. Uh, We were just talking off the air a few moments ago about uh, what AnyPay's got cooking up for uh, Fork Fest coming up here in just a few weeks. You guys are going to be doing a, uh, would it be best to call it a rave tent? It's a lounge. A lounge, okay. Okay. (laughs) It's got super cool, chill house music, deep house, all day. Not every every day. I saw a schedule showing like trance maybe. Yeah, well, at at night for a couple of hours, there's special music Ah, where where I'm DJing. Otherwise, it's just all day, really nice, chill place. It's a a huge geodesic dome. It's going to have like couches and stuff where you can chill out and chat. It's like a salon for discussing ideas. So cool. The... um, forum at forkfest.party yeah. has a post by steven oh, from cool. several months ago that explains capital interest music lounge, the lounge right at forkfest 2019 uh, relax discuss indulge in excellent music and occasionally dance right and then so trance night it's gonna be cool i've been putting together some what i consider to be trance so we'll see okay we'll see how, how that overlaps with your i'm Very sure cool. excellent trance taste Forkfest, you could go because why not? It's free. You, all you have to do is pay for your campsite, and then you can even share your campsite with other people if you Frankly, want. Frankly, you probably don't even have to do that. Well, I mean, <laughs> but you should. There is a five dollar a day uh, fee the campground would like you to pay if you're just going to be kind of hanging out, and I think that's more than more than reasonable. Oh yeah, but uh, you know, because you know, somebody's got to clean the bathrooms. Uh, yeah, there, and if you don't want to do that, there have. are hotels nearby. That's true. There's the Cabot that's just down uh, just down the street, yeah. which is pretty nice. In fact, I just talked to the owner of the uh, the restaurant inside the Cabot, old Bostonian uh, today, the uh, ye old or the old Bostonian. Uh, and she is still open, so that's good because you know restaurants. If they make it past a year, it's a good right. sign, right? Like most of them don't. Yeah. And so she's still open, but nobody had spent cryptocurrency in the last year. So as soon as Forkfest and Porkfest were over last year, none of the North Country uh, Liberty crypto people had gone there. So now there's a North Country crypto group, and oh, I happen to be in it. Right. And so I said to them today, I was like, "Hey." Did you guys know that you could actually spend your cryptocurrency? Because they've been having meetings And now. did they know? They didn't. Oh, of course. Like, they got to move oh, their Plus, meetings. they get cash back with AnyPay. Right. Well, with Dash and, and Bitcoin Cash. That's right. Yeah. Um, because I think she's actually willing to take Doge and Z- Zcash as well. So. All right. <laughs> so she's one of the more accepting. I'm smart totally moment. bringing Doge. Yeah. So she's so super cool. She's super excited. So like local businesses are excited to you know have us there, and it's going to be a good time. You can go to forkfest.party, and that is a website, forkfest.party. That's where you can link over to the uh, the forum and the Telegram chat room, which now has like almost eighty people uh, in the Telegram chat. It's super busy. There's people talking about like putting together a potluck dinner, I think now, and there's. Um, it's so great. Yeah. There's so much spontaneous order. There's happening a calendar with this party. that's being put together, and there's talk about, you know, like how can we decentralize the calendar and make it so, you know, more people can access it. It is so cool yeah. what is happening with this. I one. love it. Yeah. So we're going to be there June 13th through the 18th. It's coming up fast. Still plenty of time, still plenty of space. We're not going to sell out the campground. It's only year number three, but I suspect it's going to be bigger this year than it was last year, and it was certainly bigger in year two than it was in year number one. So uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. Without a doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Go to ForkFest.Party, and we will look forward to seeing you there. We'll be broadcasting from the event. Uh, So let's continue here or get into this story about what's going on in Venezuela. The AP piece here shows a photograph of a man in a hoodie, and he's got like a a black mask or dark blue mask over his face. Uh, In his hand, he has a revolver. And a very you know dark skinned uh, Latin Latin gentleman. Is this like a stock photo or a no, real photo? No, this of is a, a criminal... photo of El Negrito, who oh. is the person uh, with whom they interviewed. Forty twenty four year old says uh, he's lost track of his murder count and is getting going to tell us about uh, what life is like as a, uh, a, a terrible criminal 
in a very poor place, which is being racked by bad economic policies by the government. Uh, but in the, you know, he's not in a very, he's obviously not doing particularly well for himself, or at the very least, if he has any money, he's not showing it. He's in a sort of a ramshackle looking, um, it looks like a shack. It, it, you know, doesn't have anything like on the walls. There's just like a, a stool and a bed and him sitting on the bed. And that's it. That's yeah. actually luxurious for Venezuela. For Caracas? <laughs> Uh, you've never been there, have you? No, I've I've never been there. Okay, ne- me neither. Thank goodness. Uh, it's not a place that people who don't want to get robbed uh, shouldn't go because it's pretty dangerous, from what I understand, on on the streets there. People are desperate, and in desperate times, I don't people know do desperate things. I, I do hear these news stories, but then I hear conflicting reports also sure. from people on the ground. Well, well, RT says it's just great there. The well, food's all over the place. Well, no not problem. Just that. Well, okay, fine. Prices RT, are probably you know, pretty low. You know, that's going to be pretty biased, but there's one guy who's real into any pay, and he used to go around Europe trying mm-hmm. to set up businesses. He's in Caracas now, and he's saying the people are so friendly. He yep. can get, not get so bad, taxi huh? rides. Yeah, it's not like he's saying they're suffering. Well, the feared street gangster El Negrito sleeps with a pistol under his pillow and says he's lost track of his murder count. But despite his hardened demeanor, he's quick to gripe about how Venezuela's failing economy is cutting into his profits. Firing a gun has become a luxury. Bullets are expensive now at $1 a piece. And with less cash circulating on the street, he says robberies just don't pay like they used to. For the 24-year-old, that that has all given way to a simple fact. Even for Venezuelan criminals, it's become harder to get by. He says if you empty your clip, you're shooting off $15, said El Negrito, who spoke to the Associated Press on the condition that he be identified only by his street name. And, you know, isn't it interesting how the media is able to find these criminals. This is so odd. You You know, know? the media lies so much that it's impossible to believe this story. You don't think you don't buy it? It follows logic, though. I mean, as a predator or as, um, like, a pest, what's the term? You need a host. You know, A a tick. A a parasite. A parasite. You need a healthy host in order to profit. Right. You don't want to suck blood that's infected. Yeah, so if you're sitting there sucking the blood of someone who's dying like right. the it's venezuelan no yeah economy then you're not doing so hot no but, it makes sense and that's why it's a credible rep- story but it makes more like to me it seems like it would just be easier for them to, them to make up the story everyone would say oh this makes sense and it probably a is a guy, a guy, a guy a like this you know this is probably representative of a number of people but you know but it's not uncommon risk it? when you look at at news media finding like a criminal to interview they they can do it, and the police can't, right? Like, if this guy is real, and there are stories where they have definitely, like, media has found certain wanted criminals, and they've been able to interview them while the, the police have been completely unsuccessful at doing it. So, wow. for some reason, the well, because able, they're probably megalomaniacal. And they want the attention. Yeah. So, uh, he says it's, so he said he was wanted to only be identified by his street name, El Negrito, and photographed wearing a hoodie and face mask to avoid attracting unwelcomed attention. He said, you lose your pistol, or if the police take it, you're throwing away $800. In something of an unexpected silver lining, says the AP, to the country's all-consuming economic crunch, experts say armed assaults and killings are plummeting in one of the world's most violent nations. At the Venezuelan Observatory of Violence, a Caracas-based nonprofit, researchers estimate homicides have plunged up to 20% over the last three years. Wow. Based on tallies from media clippings and sources at local morgues. So maybe you're right. Maybe things are getting a little safer for whatever reason. Maybe the criminals are just so ill. You know, they're so malnourished. They can't even get out in the streets. They can't fight anybody. Are you talking about the state? No, no, the normal criminals. the, The ones that don't have an army. Uh, backing them. We'll continue here. Because the the, uh, the state criminals, the state-run criminals, they're still pretty well-fed. Like Nicolas Maduro, the president there, he's he's got a few pounds on him. He's doing all right. He could he could skip a few oh, He's meals. a fatty. That's what the, that's yeah. A, yeah. He's eating so, so many. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You dial in toll-free and bring up whatever's on your minds. We're talking about Venezuela and how just absolutely bad things are, even for the criminals. Not the government criminals, but the other criminals. Uh, <laughs> you know, the ones that don't have any legitimacy. And I don't know how much legitimacy even the government goons have uh, there in Venezuela these days. I'm sure a lot of people are pretty tired 
of uh, the scam currency that they are operating, the Venezuelan Bolivar and the Petro, which, from what we can tell, doesn't actually exist in any meaningful shape or form. You can't really get it. No, but he's... um... Maduro said that they raised five billion dollars the first day, <laughs> just more than any ICO. Yeah, he's lying. <laughs> no publicly verifiable yeah. blockchain. You can't. No, you can't even show it. You can't get. You can't get it. We've looked and we've tried and we've. You know, Chris Reitman put the wallet on his his phone, which is like a scary thing to do to put a government wallet uh, on on your device. But he did it and he couldn't do anything with it. It's impossible. It doesn't exist. So, you can bring up whatever you want here. Uh, we'll get deeper into Venezuela if we get the chance. Your calls and thoughts, of course, are welcome. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Let's go to Tom in New Hampshire. Tom, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. It was five years ago today, 28 May 2014, when the cops threw a flash grenade into a playpen where a little boy was sleeping. Oh, I remember Cornelia, that story. Georgia. Did that? Did the yeah. baby die from that, or did it just get severe no. burns? No, he got severe burns. He's going to be suffering terribly for the rest, for the of, his rest of his life. For the rest of his life, yeah, sure. And another reason why you should teach your children to hate cops, because not just all the cops that were participating in that attack— they're all the police forces of a hostile government. I don't think that helps, honestly. And I understand why people hate. I understand why they're angry. That is a a very um, awful situation for anybody to be involved with, especially the parents and the child itself. I mean, it's terrifying uh, what happened there. But I don't think hate is going to heal uh, the world's problems. I don't think that it's going to persuade. I don't think that it's going to help. Um, but I, you know, again, I understand why people feel that way. It's it's the natural human response is to respond with anger uh, when f- confronted with horrors like that. It's just more proof that no human being will ever be safe until the last cop is dead. Let God oh. sort them out. Thanks for the call, Tom. Uh, appreciate it. The toll free number here is eight fifty five four fifty free. It's harsh. It's Tom harsh. from New Hampshire. Yep, 855-450-3733. Let's talk to Bad Slave. He's on the line here. Uh, are you there, Bad Slave, on Discord? Yes, I am. How you doing, uh, Ian? We have you. You're on with uh, Ian, Derek, and Stephen. Go ahead. Uh, good good to speak with both of you. And, and Stephen, I want to give you uh, kudos for a wonderful comeback for, for Sarah. In the, in yeah, best part call. of the show tonight. Oh, I don't think we can top it. I just can't stand yeah. Sarah. I, w- <laughs> I wish Ian would ban her. Now, like, maybe I can get him to make her pay to call in or something. I, I, I want her to just quit calling because she's so frustrated. That's what I'd like to have happen. Well, but you guys, I, uh, it's important to feel strongly about what you hear on talk radio, right? Like, if you hate t- Sarah then you have a strong feeling. That means you're paying right. attention. You care about what it is that's coming out of the speaker. It's having an effect on you. Even if it's one that you don't feel good about, I, <laughs> it's having an effect. I actually, I actually mm. don't hate anyone. That's good. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, that's, a, that's a completely wasted emotion. I agree. It's not productive uh, because and, hate and, never and hurts the person you're hating. That, that claims it of mm. others is... is 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 likely mistaken uh but anyway i i i just, i he's so wrong i mean you know it it, it the, i mean she's whole, on welfare i mean she was raised the, to believe in the government uh she the government has taken care of her for her entire life she's in her 50s or 60s or something early 60s maybe late 50s or something she's like another species of of creature she doesn't even belong in our category like, well that's why we oh, live in new no. hampshire she's the what's scary is she is the same species of creature and it's a warning to the rest of us of what happens when you change the conditions sure the right you Pretty, yeah, her. it could have been me it could have been right. any of yeah. us and any of us could have been nazi collaborators or any it's of this the stanford prison experiment except with welfare mm-hmm. it's it's the what I, happens to a person when you give them everything i just can't accept that that there's no way she can't put it together to to do some basic job you know oh, I, she I, could it, 
I mean, the claim that she's got bipolar or whatever, and that's that's because I've asked her about right. this before in the past. Like, well, Sarah, yeah, you know, yeah. you you can dial a phone and talk to us. So obviously, you could do like a customer. But service But she is job. doing a job. Look, there are right. people out there who want to pay for for people to do nothing and call in to talk radio all the time. They're like, oh, they feel good about about paying for welfare. So yeah. she's doing that job for them. That's true. They get a psychic benefit. Yeah, she's got a salary. You know, <laughs> she's working hard. But anyway, I, I I think that we all all we all we should come up with something like what Steve said every time she calls in and, and just just put it back on her and own it. I mean, you know, otherwise we're we're heading towards uh Venezuela, just as, as we see in uh South well, yeah, America. that's definitely true. I mean, uh, the government has a huge amount of influence over people and what they think and what they believe and the media, you know, the, the government schools are who educates the people who end up creating the news media. And of course, they all look at the government as this uh, this expert group of people, these leaders, they call them leaders constantly. <laughs> um, the attitude of the uh, the media towards them is very deferential, very worshipful. It's very rare that you'll see them questioning the states. You know, they may not like one politician or another, but they never question the fundamental premises of uh, of the state. So, you know, these are part of the things that we're trying to do. We're the counterbalance, and we're not a very heavy one. You know, we're we're only on two hundred radio stations, and uh, all the great websites out there, libertarian media, we're is not very heavier large. And heavier, though. Surely, there are tons of people out there just like her who may yes. even be listening in. And they, I think the best message for them to hear is that the state is done. It's over. Forget about it. Because they're not hearing that. And it's true. They probably don't even understand it when you say it. The state. What do you mean? The ground? The the, the trees? You know, like (laughs) people don't understand. Like the word the state mean can mean a different thing like to us it means something very specific the state is this idea that it's somehow okay to use violence against our neighbors and in some sort of an organizational you know institutionalized system um it's insane to us to them it's like oh i love the state of new hampshire it's pretty look at the rocks and Mm. the trees it's beautiful what do you mean you don't like the state and and the the actual truth of it is that the, the you know i i've renamed the state the destructo bot, because that's what they are. <laughs> they do I act like very robotic at times, don't they? And thank you for they're the call robotic, tonight. Man. And they destroy. Yep, I mean, there sure is do. there is only destruction for them to produce whatever they do. Oh, but no, there, they can there point is to nothing else. Oh, they can point to the people that get welfare checks. See, that's not destructing. They're helping people get uh, health care and it's destroying school the, lunches. It's destroying the capacity of those people to actually uh, enter the commerce, the productive economy. Yeah, I totally well agree. Said. Totally agree. Thank mm-hmm. you, bad slave. Good call. Great Appreciate commentary. Appreciate bad hearing from slave. You. Guy is and bad. I like destructo, but yeah, he is a bad slave. <laughs> <laughs> Destructo bot is a good term. I'm looking for a new term because you bring up that, you know, definitions are important. The mm-hmm. words we use matter. And when you say the state, it means two different things to different people. So we got to get on the same page about what we're talking about. Right. And everyone can be against Destructo bot. So that's a that's a step in the right direction. But well, the destructo a bot has its place if we're not talking about the state. Like, do you ever see the battle bots show where they like put uh, robots in a in an arena and yeah. have them try yeah, to like, one destroy one? Yeah, one has a saw and one has like that's a hammer. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, like, that's the kind show. of destructo bot. That, it's really good show. Uh, cool. Yeah. Well, Sarah wasn't talking about the state as we know, just like enforcers and all of this. She was specifically talking about the legislatures. The legislatures. Yeah. And that point, I want to say, those guys are going. They're go- they're going mm-hmm. away because. And, and at one point, they were the best technology we had for organizing you know, a larger group of people because there wasn't— You think? Yeah. Well, they were— You don't think it was always a bad idea? Well, okay, groups of people come physically coming together right. in a central location to, you know, to co- try to coordinate themselves. That was necessary, more necessary than now because of telecommunications. Okay, but even back then— was it really necessary, or was it just an excuse for the people who wanted to control others? Yeah, no, they were always busybody types. Well, the I mean, state, yeah, but like other groups of people getting together physically and like having meetings is mm-hmm. no longer as necessary. 
This and, is true. Right, and people can communicate broadly to per, as many people as they want, like we're doing right now. It's true. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE, and we can do those things and develop those things much faster than the state can do anything because it's the state. It's you know, It stays as is. It doesn't change much. Uh, more coming up here, and that's another definition of the state, like the state of the art. It's Free Talk Live. More on the way. Would you like to hang out with Penn Jillette? He's keynoting Freedom Fest this year. I, for one, am thrilled. Freedom Fest is the largest liberty-oriented gathering in the world. They take a Big Ten approach with libertarians, conservatives, liberals, anarchists, capitalists, and just open-minded people mingling together to hear real debates, share real solutions, and converse freely. This year's theme is the Wild West, a time of liberty and opportunity, or a time of anarchy and violence. Maybe both. Go to freedomfest.com slash FTL and get your tickets now. Now, freedomfest.com slash FTL. Not convinced yet? Hey, I understand. It's a high-end event, even with coupon code FTL50. Sure, you're likely to receive investment advice that'll make that sum seem paltry, but I have something special for you. Go to freedomfest.com slash FTL, and you'll get the five best speeches from last year for free. Call it a test drive. Do yourself a favor and go to freedomfest.com slash FTL. Freedomfest.com slash FTL. Use coupon code FTL50 for a discount. Free Talk Live. It's Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want here and take control of the airwaves. Our number is 855-450-FREE-LIKE-FREEDOM. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. Steven. And Derek J. And, of course, you can bring up whatever you want. We were in the last hour, kind of just scratched the surface of uh, an interesting piece by the Associated Press reporting on what it's like to be a criminal, not the government criminals, but the other ones, uh, like your typical you know, single thug in Caracas in Venezuela. Disorganized crime. Exactly. And uh, how life is even more difficult for them, the people who have, you know, historically lived off of the efforts of others by stealing them or robbing them or whatever. Apparently, this guy's claiming that he's even committed murders and claims uh, that he has lost track of how many. So let's continue with that story. Of course, you can bring up anything that you want here. Our toll free number is 855 450 free. And so, again, it's the Associated Press here. They say that in, they're claiming actually that violent crimes are down. Uh, in fact, claiming that homicides have plunged up to 20 percent over the last 20 years, excuse me, 23 years, 20 uh, percent over the last three years, based on tallies from media clippings and sources at local morgues. Officials of President Nicolas Maduro's socialist administration have drawn criticism for not releasing robust crime statistics, but the government on Tuesday gave the AP figures showing a 39% drop in homicides over the same three-year period, with 10,598 killings in the year 2018. How many killings? 10,598. That's presumably for the whole year for all of the country. Wow. That's a lot. That sounds like a lot. It is a lot. Uh, and, of course, it's the government's number, so who knows what the actual you know, statistics are. Officials also report a fall in kidnappings. The decline has a direct link to the economic tailspin that has helped spark a political battle for control over the once or of the once wealthy oil nation. Soaring inflation topped one million percent last year. And wow. this is one of the reasons why we were talking earlier about how important it is for people in that that situation in venezuela to get a hold of cryptocurrencies whatever one we're talking about whether it be bitcoin btc or dash or bitcoin cash any cryptocurrency is going to do better than the boulevard with the exception of maybe like bitconnect or something like that but most of the you know the cryptos out there are going to do a lot better than the boulevard where I heard they're going again they're, they're it doing, hasn't gone away they're doing it again yeah. though there's another one it's still there bitconnect 2 or something well it's, it's like the example of a scam coin from like top to prime, bottom yeah speaking of inflation most people know that bitcoin is not at an all-time high right now you know it's kind of it's it's half the price of its all-time high do people know that most people who are into bitcoin but okay. it's really doing very well but in argentina this week it did hit an all-time high in oh. terms of pesos really wow right because the peso has fallen by over half since the previous all-time high of bitcoin that's amazing. 
There was another all-time high that I saw about the number of wallets that have, I believe it was less, or was it more than 0.1? I've got the story here. I'll have to pull it up. But like, Right, more than 0.1 BTC. The, the number of wallets that have that much keeps increasing. Yeah, so that means that presumably that means more people have Bitcoin than ever before. Yeah. I mean, you can't really say for sure because it's just wallets. One person could have 10 or 20 or whatever wallets, but it's a good measurement generally over time that of adoption. Yeah, it seems to be an indicator. Makes sense to me. Yeah. So that's another all-time high for Bitcoin that just happened, I think, a few days ago. That's pretty exciting. Uh, but it's super important for the folks in Venezuela to do everything they can to get rid of the boulevard. Which the typical way that, that people do that in countries where there's hyperinflation, you know, whether we're talking about Zimbabwe or whatever in the you know, Germany in the past, uh, the typical way that people get rid of their money is to spend it. Like as soon as they get the paycheck, they go to the store and they spend it on everything they can possibly buy because right. the longer they wait, the less of the value that you know, the, the money will lose value. In Argentina, I talked to a number of business owners, and they all take all the pesos they get every day and buy dollars. Yeah, sure. They deposit On the black it market, right? In or can the they bank. do it in the bank? Yeah, they put it into the bank account, and it goes to dollars. Interesting. Well, yeah. that's, that's good that in Argentina you can still do that. You can't do that in Venezuela. Mm, the right. banks don't work both ways. You can only take dollars and get Bolivar from the bank. You cannot go in with Bolivar and <laughs> the get bank's dollars. like, well, you got to bring us something of value. <laughs> like, we're not going to just give you dollars for nothing. <laughs> right. So uh, it might even be a crime in, in yeah. Venezuela. So going on here with uh, more from the story, inflation topping 1 million percent last year, making the local boulevard nearly useless, even though ATM machines have been unable to dispense more than a dollar's worth of scrip anyway. The severe scarcity of food and medicine has driven some 3. million Venezuelans to seek better prospects in places like Colombia, Panama, and Peru. Yeah, if you're not crippled, if you can get out of Venezuela... And you can get the rest of your family out. You you ought to. Uh, the reason why a lot of people stay is because of family, right? Like they're like, well, I could leave and I'm able bodied, but my grandfather is you know, he's in a wheelchair. How are we supposed to get him out? It's not going to be as easy, uh, or whatever. People or some people just want to stay where they were born. You know, they 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 feel like they're obligated to stick it out. Maybe they feel like it'll blow over. Like uh, you know, could they really? we've been through this sort of thing before. History repeats. Have you know? they? We'll get back to our our former glory. Or at least not so bad as it is today. They, uh, there was an article recently that said that Venezuela is worse than, I think it was, I forget how many years, but in like a matter of decades, like since the 70s, uh, the worst economic destruction with the exception of war, basically, with the exception mm -hmm. of countries that had been like bombed out husks, Venezuela is the worst. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know if they have been through this before. This may be the probably the first time, for, even for the uh, octogenarians living in, in Venezuela, the first time that anybody's been that poor. Going on here, uh, let's see. The majority of them are young males whom gangs or from whom gangs recruit, and workdays are frequently curtailed due to nationwide strikes. But as the country descends into a state of lawlessness, many Venezuelans who turn to, find, uh, turn to crime find themselves subject to the same chaos that has led to a broader political and social meltdown. Critics... Blame 20 years of the socialist revolution launched by President Hugo Chavez, who expropriated once thriving businesses that today produce a fraction of their potential under government management. And we've talked about this before as well, where they've literally uh, nationalized hundreds of businesses over the years in Venezuela and run them straight into the ground. Because a bureaucrat cannot run a business. Bureaucrats do not have the ability to be subject to market signals like a business owner. Yeah, they might have the ability. They they don't have the incentives. The incentives. Yeah. Well, there's also bureaucrats within large corporations. Absolutely. And corporate theory does does show that it's it's best when like it, within a large corporation, they don't even know what the different pricing and and signals are um within the company, so they have to use other companies to tell them to even find out what the price of stuff is. So wow. like they can't even produce the whole stack of what they need for their product even if they could they would just be way off like they need the market signal of prices yeah and at least corporations can get those signals whereas governments are almost completely insulated from them it doesn't matter to the government what the prices of things well are. did you know that right. they'll in, just steal money in the soviet yeah. union they they had no idea what prices were supposed to be mm -hmm. right so they would literally get like the sears, sears catalog. catalog yeah and they would look at the prices even though that was the american prices for those items and it wouldn't necessarily correlate with whatever their economy could support 
Certainly, right. the price of those things in their economy must have been way higher. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody could buy it anyway at whatever price the uh, bureaucrats were arbitrarily setting. So it's just an absolute mess. And uh, earlier this year, opposition leader Juan Guaido launched a bold campaign with support of the U.S. government and 50 other nations to oust Maduro, who was the Chavez's successor. He was Chavez's right-hand man while Chavez was in, and now he's the president. However, Guaido has yet to make good on his promises to restore democracy, spark a robust economy, and make the streets safer. Well, that's, I mean, he's not the president. He says he's the president. The U.S. government and other governments, you know, government gangs are recognizing him as the president, but he's not sitting in the office. They are recognizing him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You hadn't heard about that? No. Yeah. So when Guaido claimed that he had won the election. So Trump is talking to Guaido yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah. The U.S. government. is it government. pronounced Guaido? I've heard are it pronounced sure that? that. Okay. Could be Guaido. Guido? Oh. G- it's G-U-A-I-D-O with an accent over it. Guido. Guido? Anyway, more coming up here. Oh, you did spend some time in South America. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So what about, what was his name? El, uh, this, this thug that they interviewed here? El Negrito? Negrito, yeah. We'll find out more about him coming up, too. 855-450-FREE. You can join us here on Free Talk Live. is free talk live you can dial in toll free and bring up whatever you want our number is 855-450-FREE like freedom that's 855-450-3733 and is oral care important to you well it should be i mean no one wants to kiss a nasty old mouth do you want to have a whiter uh, cleaner smile and fresh breath well, my magic mud is a black tooth powder made of charcoalized coconut shells and bentonite clay. Wow, that stuff works. Yeah, you've used it? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And it makes your teeth whiter. It definitely cleans your mouth. Right. The next line in this is sounds crazy, right? Like it's it's counter it seems counterintuitive that you could put black stuff in your <laughs> mouth. Your whole mouth is gonna be so yeah. black. Yeah, for a moment. For a moment, and then yeah. you wash it out and it's white. After a few days, it definitely uh, according to Mark, who was like a coffee drinker, he said he saw a significant difference uh after a few days. And uh we, by the way, we used to advertise my magic mud way back when they were first getting started, and so all of our crew has uh, experience. I've got their toothpaste actually up in the bathroom right now. Which, I've got some uh, My Magic Mud at home. Yeah, I was buying My Magic Mud in the time when we, they weren't an advertiser because it's it's a great product and uh, it's very very good. You can use it every day for four days, then every three or four days afterward, and you'll see the effects. Clinically proven, in fact, to whiten teeth, and it cleans better than regular toothpaste as well. You can get My Magic Mud at most local health food stores like Sprouts, Natural Grocers, CVS, and even Walmart's Natural Beauty aisle. But here on Free Talk Live, we can get you 20% off with code FTL20, and that helps us because then they know that we sent them to uh, sent you to them. Go to MyMagicMud.com, use code FTL, like Free Talk Live, 20, so like 20%, FTL20 to get 20% off MyMagicMud.com. And if you order enough, there's like a certain minimum order, you can also get free shipping, which is pretty awesome. Nice. Check it out. And, and it uh, doesn't really go bad, so you should oh, order a lot. It stores for a long time, too. And it takes a long time to get through one of those containers as well. Yeah. Uh, so really good product and nice folks and liberty-loving folks who made it. Uh, I, like I said, we, we interviewed Jessica, who is one of the founders of the company, recently on the show. And I was like, we can say we knew you when. Like all the way yeah. back at Porkfest when yeah. they were I remember we were it. there being a booth at Porkfest where people were brushing their teeth. And I was like, what <laughs> What's going is on going here? on? <laughs> And everyone had black teeth and black <laughs> stuff in their mouth. It's what like, kind of cult have you stumbled what into? What is this? Welcome to the Free State Project. Right. <laughs> <laughs> MyMagicMud.com, code FTL20. All right, so we've been talking about the violence and the uh, terrible living conditions down there in Venezuela, thanks to the government, thanks mm. to their economic policies of just turning on the money printing presses and going to town. And then uh, hyperinflating the currency. How much should we really blame just the government and not at all the people who voted for that? Basically zero. I I wonder. Wait, are you saying don't blame the people or blame? Do blame the people? Yeah, blame the people. Yeah, because I mean, how much of a fight did they put up against Maduro and all the promises that he made for all? Yeah, but who was he running against? It was probably somebody else who sucked. Yeah, but what about when they confiscated the guns? 
Yeah, that was bad. I don't they know do about the history. About I'm just saying, like, maybe these people went along with really bad ideas for a long time. Well, they say you get the government you deserve. Or that the people get the government that they deserve. Right? I don't know that that's true in all cases, but I'm wondering if it's true in this case. Well, I mean, at it, what point? People, like you're I saying. I never heard about any resistance to this government. People have to have a point at which that they're going to stop going along to get along, right? Like to, to where they will be willing to resist. And at what point would that be here in the United States? People have been pretty, uh, you know, brainwashed here. There's... I know. There used to be. I mean, I don't know. It seems like the U.S. or, or the Americas has this tradition of um, like knowledge and philosophy about the the dangers of a, a welfare system and the virtues of independence, mm-hmm. where we look down on a Sarah who might um, do better for herself and for the world if she were more independent and sure. not uh, dependent on handouts. And if you're part of a culture, a whole country of people who are like, yeah, we want more of that. More, more handouts. More Sarahs. We yeah. all want to be Sarahs. That's bad. That's not going to lead to good things. Yeah, give that 10, 20 years, 30 years, and it's, what, the worst place on earth. Right. They can't even take the natural resource of oil and make money on that these days. Yeah. That's so, how bad it is there. Yeah. So let's continue. A little bit more here from the Associated Press, and they are going to tell us about what life is like. They've just kind of been summarizing some of the... You know, the the political ramifications of what's been going on there. You've got two different socialists who are fighting over the country. I think that's, that's another my point. important point. Are these people still unaware? I don't want to be mean, but are they unaware of the, the consequences I don't of know. their philosophy? Everyone else left. That's the thing. Like All the people who there's understood. There's fight or flight, <laughs> and flight is easy. I mean, like, we all moved here. Yep. I, I didn't need to fight the state of California. Right. right. It's easy. Venezuelans, they go to... Colombia, Buenos Aires, mm-hmm. Colombia, all over South America. Anywhere else is better okay. than where they were. So that's the deal. So you're, yeah, what you're saying is the ones who are smart enough got out. Thank yes, goodness yeah. for open borders. I mean, if you're running a business in Venezuela and you see other businesses being nationalized, do you want to keep going? Because you could be next. Right? I'm amazed. I mean, one of our one of the people who uses any pay in Venezuela is like a cupcake shop. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's cute. That's great. I'm glad there are people Amazing to buy cupcakes. Open. Yeah. But uh, why would you open a business there? Like, why wouldn't you just open a business to try to help your better? people? You know, like to some extent, there's probably the yeah. You, know, you know how people are about where they live, right? Like the place where they were born. Um, they kind of hold on to a certain love for that place. It may not apply yeah. to us because we've moved from the places we were we were born. But for a lot of people, it's like. That's my town. You know, that's my team. Those are my people, even though it doesn't really mean, I mean in the scheme of things, it probably doesn't <laughs> yeah. mean anything. Uh, but to them, it does, you right. know, and they have a real connection with the people that they grew up with there. And like, if people are hungry around you and you have the ability to cook and you don't want to leave, then you probably want to try to like feed those people would be my guess. Yeah. And, and plus, like. Your family and friends are not on the same page. Like they don't all understand that it's easier for you all to just leave. Right. So I mean, you want to leave, but they don't. What do you do? Yeah. What do you do? You love them. You're attached to them. Maybe you're reliant on them in emotional or economic ways. Or maybe ways. they're reliant on you. You're the the breadwinner. That's right. You know. And what obligation do you have to the people who created you? You don't have an obligation, but you sure a lot of people feel, feel like you do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as a result of the chaos, as the AP, crime has not so much disappeared as simply morphed in form. While assaults are down, reports of theft and pilfering of everything from copper telephone wires to livestock are surging. Meanwhile, drug trafficking and illegal gold mining... Ha- <laughs> illegal gold mining? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, have become default activities for or- organized crime. That doesn't no sound rock like a crime. Gathering, right? Well, this is what happens in a country where the government has total you know, economic. I, I would, I'd be willing to bet that gold mining is illegal in the United States too. <laughs> like, I don't know. It would be interesting to find that out. When night falls, streets in Caracas clear as most residents abide by an undeclared curfew out of fear for their safety. Despite the significant drop in killings, Venezuelans tend not to gaze at their cell phones in the streets. Many leave got to be aware, so, right? oh, like yeah. your situational awareness. Here in New Hampshire, you walk around with your cell phone, you're probably not going to get robbed. You're going to hit someone, though. 
there, that could happen in uh, in Mexico. You know, my concern was falling through a hole in the streets. <laughs> that, there literally were holes in, uh, in the Acapulco streets. If you weren't paying attention, you're going in one of them, and break a leg, wow, or at the very least, uh, hurt yourself in some way. We'll talk about more about what what is life like for criminals in Venezuela coming up here at eight fifty five four fifty free, or at least how the AP wants you to think. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three, and you can take control of the airwaves here. On Free Talk Live. Coming up, Derek J wants to take us to talk radio hell with abortion on the way. You love Bitcoin. It's the future, right? Well, no, not if everyone stops using it. I mean, think about it. How many places in your town take Bitcoin? One? None? Let's be real. If this Bitcoin thing is ever going to happen, it's going to need your help. The good news is the guys at AnyPay have your back. We built a website called HelpMeTakeBitcoin.com. And it's a place you can send any business. And they'll be set up to take Bitcoin in five minutes. HelpMeTakeBitcoin.com It's Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free and join us here if you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE-LIKE-FREEDOM. That's 855-450-3733. Also, we do have the Discord on-air call-in line rooms over at discord.lrn.fm if you want to join us there. And by the way, the Discord server is where you can interact regularly. I mean, there's people in there pretty much all hours of the day and the night, and uh, you can interact with other Free Talk Live listeners. Some of them uh, you have heard as callers to the show. Others never call, but that's fine. Most people that listen never will call, and that's that's okay. Uh, But you can interact with them uh, for free. It's a free chat server. There's different rooms. There's one for cryptocurrency discussion, one for gaming. Uh, There's several different rooms there. And then there's, of course, the ones that allow you to call in during our live show. But it's free, so you can download the Discord app, load that up on your uh, smart device or your laptop or computer, whatever it is you want. There's apps for pretty much every operating system out there, and it's it's free. Go to discord.lrn.fm. And Bitcoin.com is your premier source for everything Bitcoin Cash related. Bitcoin.com can help you choose a Bitcoin Cash wallet, buy Bitcoin Cash, and show you where you can spend your Bitcoin Cash. You can also read the latest news on their news site and engage with the community on their forums. And you can learn more over at Bitcoin.com. And one of the other things you mentioned earlier, uh, Stephen, talking about how people in Venezuela need to be able to get in and out of, of Bitcoin. So they're using Bitcoin for remittances, but some people are using, say, local Bitcoins as a website to, for instance, sell their Bitcoin and get Bolivar so that they can then buy buy things locally at places that don't yet accept cryptocurrency. Well, coming up in about a week uh, from today, the folks over at Bitcoin.com are going to be launching a competitor to local mm-hmm. Bitcoins. They're going to call it local.bitcoin.com. And that is where you will be able to buy and sell Bitcoin cash with, let's say, dollars or Bolivar or whatever. It's going to be a global site. So people in Venezuela will be able to use this site and they'll be able to avoid all the terrible fees that uh, they have to currently pay with Bitcoin BTC. And there's no know your customer requirements to sign up for an account at local.bitcoin.com. In fact, you can go there right now and sign up for the account, even though they haven't officially launched the site. They haven't opened up the site's full features yet, but this this account registration is there. You can even post a selling advertisement. So if you have Bitcoin Cash you want to sell, you can post that ad. But again, nobody can respond to the ad yet until uh, June 4th, so about a week from today. So check it out over at local.bitcoin.com. And from what I understand, they're also going to encrypt the communications between buyers and sellers. Beautiful. So the site itself will not nice. be able to know what is being talked about unless you need the site to like arbitrate a dispute. And they're going to allow later on, I think, for other people to be arbitrators. So like there can be like a professional arbitrators on the site. This is wonderful. It's really interesting what, they, uh, what they've what they got planned Bitcoin. there. Bitcoin.com is growing at such a fast pace and producing all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, I was at their offices a few weeks ago in, in Tokyo. I'd never been there before. And man, some of the stuff they were telling me about that they've got working is really exciting. Some of it I can't talk about on the air. Yeah. Uh, but local.bitcoin.com, I can. So I'm excited about it. That's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on trying it out. I've already got an account registered there. Me too. So I'm, ready I'm to, excited. I'm ready to go. Yeah, it seems already leagues better than localbitcoins.com, which I've used and loved for years. Oh, local bitcoins, I think, is always going to have a, a warm spot in my heart for sure. Uh, but they got cracked down on by the government recently. They had to, by according to the Finnish government, I think it was, because I think they're based in, in Finland, they had to 
in, implement mandatory know your customer requirements on all sellers. Well, good thing that Bitcoin.com is based in St. Bits. That's right. Wherever that is. Um, well, again, you know, they're also saying, hey, look, we're, we're not even holding the funds. So they're not, uh, right. es- they're not, that's another important part is they got, I think what they're calling blind escrow. Right. Where, oh, uh, yeah. they're not, they're not involved in anything except running a website, basically. And, and Bitcoin is such a great technology yeah. to enable more freedom. And- well, in this case, I think it's Bitcoin Cash apparently now has a way to do like, um, escrow or coding or something so yeah. it's going to be like a smart contract basically yeah that's what it's I'm because talking, of yeah. the new signature type that you were saying was no good oh uh, i don't like the that signatures yeah, i guess i'm torn on that hmm. yeah that's beyond well, my once my it level does of... something cool for me then i'm happy but okay. this, this well, whole blind escrow thing, sounds pretty cool yeah it does sound cool but in the meantime it broke my app and i was on <laughs> i'm not happy about all these changes well that's what Stop happens making changes, changes changes can break things Stop right? it. uh change for the sake of change is that good well that's arguable so we've been talking about Venezuela and the criminal class there. Not the government criminals, but the other criminals. Uh, the ones that are more likely to you know, put a gun or a knife in your back and just rob you straight, straight out in the streets. As a result of the chaos, they say here that, uh, or when night falls, most in Caracas abide by an undeclared curfew out of fear for their safety. Despite the significant drop in killings, Venezuelans aren't looking at their cell phones in the streets. Many leave gold and silver wedding rings in secure places at home, while others have grown accustomed to checking whether they're being followed. Quote, Venezuela remains one of the most violent countries in the world. This according to Dorothy Kronick, who teaches political science at the University of Pennsylvania and has carried out extensive research in Caracas's slums. She says, it has wartime levels of violence, but no war. El Negrito, this is the 24-year-old hoodlum, the criminal that they interviewed for the story, leads four higher gangsters called the Crazy Boys, a band that forms part of an intricate criminal network in Petar, or Petare, one of Latin America's largest and most feared slums. The gangster, who agreed to an interview with two associates at their hillside hideout in Caracas, said his group now carries out roughly five kidnappings a year. Down, Whoa. That's down. From the past, he says, considerably. Because, I mean, how are they going to pay the ransom? I mean, you can't kidnap people if they can't pay the ransom, right? Such ex- uh, says here that such express abductions are big business. How many kidnappings do you think there are around here? That's a good question. I mean, how does that compare to I haven't the rest heard of, of one. World? Well, New Hampshire was ranked number 50 out of 50 states for the most violent crime. Okay, so not violent at all. Not violent at all, but it's, more violent than two Canadian states. I think it is New Hampshire, as far as murder is concerned, per capita, just behind Vermont as the number two least murderous state. So it is not murderous at all here. Vermont, like the, the difference between the two is very, very fractured. I don't know someone... about you guys, but kidnapping sounds scarier than murder to me. I don't, you know, I'd rather just be dead real quick than You may not be dead real quick me. by a murder. I mean, it could be a, like a slaughtering where you're slowly murdered. That would be. But you horrible. might get away with the kidnapping. What? Oh, yeah, I might get away from the kidnapper. Yeah, could escape. yeah, yeah. Or like, I hear stories That's all true. the time of, of girls who a were kidnapped ladies, for like yeah. five years or something, and then they get out. Yeah, I knew a guy who wanted to be kidnapped. <laughs> It was what? like a no, fetish. Kinky. Yeah, it was a fetish. He wanted somebody to like pull up in a van. That's so with interesting. The black masks. And uh, and kidnap him. You wow. probably know him. That's a fascinating. He runs a Bitcoin finish. vending machine in Manchester. Yeah, I yeah. immediately had a guess. <laughs> as to who wow, that. well, that's kind of fun. So uh, going on here about the crazy boys. Typically, a victim is nabbed and held hostage for up to forty-eight hours, while loved ones scramble to gather as much cash as they can find. While kidnappers focus on speed and a quick return rather than on the size of the payout. El Negrito said the ransom they set depends on what a victim's car costs, and the deal can turn deadly if demands aren't met. But like many of his associates, he has considered leaving the trade in Venezuela and emigrating. Neighbors say the life expectancy for his street thugs is about 25 years. I hope he immigrates somewhere where people have guns. And can stop him from doing these things. He's got a gun, because, you know, criminals are willing to... Where good guys have guns. Right, yeah. (laughs) He said people have quit the world of crime and sought more honest work abroad, fearing stiff penalties in other countries where laws are more enforced. That's interesting. So suggesting that the police aren't anywhere to be found, that if you get kidnapped in Venezuela, you better pay the ransom. 
or go and find the kidnappers yourself and do something about it because the police aren't going to help you. Wow. They're too busy trying to find food, would be my guess. While explaining They're probably that, fed enough. They yeah, work for the government. Probably true. They can get all the... Uh, well, there was a story about the soldiers, like, killing goats or whatever because they didn't have enough food at wow. one point. This was a couple of years ago now. I mean, again, you presume the government's taking care of its own, you know, soldiers as much as they can. While explaining the struggles to support his wife and young daughter, El Negrito passed a silver pistol between his hands. A Bible lay open to Proverbs on a dresser as a breeze turned the pages. <laughs> See what I'm saying about this being made up? This is... <laughs> they made that part up. They made some amount of this up. Toll free number here, 855-450-FREE. You can bring up whatever you want here. On the way, abortion and the last abortion clinic in one state. Derek will tell us. Coming up. Yeah. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. The toll free number here, 855-450-FREE, like freedom. That's 855-450-3733. We've got the Discord on-air call-in line rooms. Over at discord.lrn.fm, jump into one of those. You'll sound almost like you're sitting here in the studio with us. We're talking about a story from the Associated Press talking about how the difficulties in Venezuela are even affecting the criminals. Because if people are generally poorer, then the criminals cannot steal as much from their victims, as we've found out with their interview of El Negrito and his gangsters from the Crazy Boys, a band of a what they call an intricate criminal network in one of latin america's largest and most feared slums but even el negrito himself is talking about leaving the country and maybe taking on honest work because it's just not working out with all the kidnappings these days it's getting harder and harder to find people who are able to pay a ransom uh and then of course you know even if you get the ransom money it starts losing value the moment it you know gets paid to you so if you want to share your thoughts with us, you're welcome to join us here. Also, I do want to say thank you to Liberate Ops. Liberate, Liberate Ops. O-P-E-S. <laughs> we need to have people tell us how to pronounce their names, too, because I don't know if I butchered that. Uh, but he or she is a Free Talk Live silver amplifier. O-P-U-S at O-P-E-S. the O-P-E-S. Ops. Ops. I think it's Ops. Liberate Ops. Anyway, thank you. For being a Free Talk Live Silver Amplifier, which means he or she is giving uh, $5 per month via either PayPal or credit card or even Bitcoin BTC to the Free Talk Live AMP program, which helps us get on more radio stations. As you know, we finally crossed the 200 radio station threshold recently. Woohoo! Uh, so, yeah, which is pretty great. That and, is cool. And it's thanks to listeners like Liberate Ops for uh, for backing us up with the AMP program. That's what AMP stands for. Advertise, market, promote. It's money that we can help market uh, free Talk Live with. In fact, we're going to be using some of that money to go to New York City coming up here in about a week. What are you going uh, there for? New York City. The Talkers. Talkers. The Talkers. Hey. Oh, man. That's what right. part of the town? Uh, Manhattan. Yeah. Well, yeah. The- <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it's at a place called the Helen Mills Theater, I think. Helen Mills Theater. So probably theater. the theater district. Hey, you got to go to La Sirene. What is that? Fine French restaurant. Uses AnyPay. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, they okay. love it. Is it on the map? It's on the map. I will be looking at the AnyPay map, and I will see if it is anywhere near the uh, the hotel. There or, are two. If it's w- yeah, two, two restaurants locations. that take yeah Soho and Upper West Side. Ooh, okay, that increases the odds then that uh, that we could go. That's pretty cool because it's so hard to find cryptocurrency accepting restaurants in places with like the coin map. It's so out of date. Impossible. They're clo- well, that's they're why you closed? need to prove it map. You're gonna. Right. You're going to be set for disappointment if you look on any other map. My God. you go there and they don't take it. I went to Austin a year ago, your hometown, Stephen. Uh, this tech hub, you know, the cool, hip, Austin's so cool. Uh, and I looked at the coin map and I'm like, all right, I got some time to kill in Austin. I want to go to this cool, hip town's got to have a place where I can spend cryptocurrency. It's got to be at least one place where I can go. Nope. And I went through the entire list of the purported restaurants on the coin map, coinmap.org, which is a cool map and everything. Um, I went through every single one of them, tried calling, tried you know finding websites, tried finding anything. 
and they were either didn't exist anymore or didn't even know anything about taking cryptocurrency. There were a bunch of like Asian restaurants on there, but what actually it was was an intermediary. So there was a company that would do like the delivery for you and you could pay the delivery company in mm. cryptocurrency to go and pick up from these places. So if you called the, you know, uh, the, the Japanese restaurant or whatever, they had no it. They didn't know anything about cryptocurrency. They didn't know you could pay cryptocurrency for their product. I didn't try doing that because to me that's not the real deal. Like it's cool. I'm glad that that thing exists, but I want to be able to go into a place, sit down and pay with cryptocurrency when I'm done. Austin didn't have anything like that. Well, they Austin has like, one business that uses any pay. It's Liberty they? Stickers. That's true. Liberty okay. Stickers. Cool. Which is where we get our bumper stickers. Oh, you here. know what? And, you know, we should get Michael Cargill to use any pay. The yeah, gun he store does, guy. Yeah, he will take Bitcoin. But, okay. if, you know, if, if he wants to be on the map. and um, That map is the coolest map. So let's talk a little more about that. It's uh, anypaymap.com. Yeah, um, I call it the Prove It Map. So it's proveitmap.com. Yeah. But if it's easier for people to just remember, it's the AnyPay Merchants, anypaymap.com. So, you know, a couple of different URLs that all go to the same place. But basically, it's a map. And what's the problem is all these other maps, as we've been talking about, they just Out of lie date. to you because you get your hopes up like, oh, wow, Boston. Gosh, there are over 100 places. businesses that take Bitcoin. It's not even that many. Zero. <laughs> Try zero businesses oh. in Boston. Because we know, because there are Bitcoin Cash <laughs> meetups there, there's uh, Dash meetups. They don't even try anymore. It is zero. Oh. Yeah. It's Aww. actually zero. And it's so sad. But Cape pathetic. Cod has a boat rental place now. Now there's a boat rental place <laughs> in Cape Cod. So we've got one in Massachusetts, right. one Bitcoin wow. accepting business. And uh, no, all these other maps, you'll see, oh, well, there must be millions of places in the world accepting Bitcoin. No, yeah. the reality is... It's only a handful, oh. and we give you the reality. We'll tell you right. what places. There's you, no BS on the AnyPay map because we've got some in Portsmouth that it's embarrassing that our hometown. Right, they've gone gray. And what does that mean? They haven't taken Bitcoin in over three months. months. And so, if you go into a, a business that's gray, I feel bad at the yellow. I'm like, oof. oh my god, we need to save these people because yellow is what, like, um, a month over, to three months over a week. Oh, it's a week. Okay, over, over a week, week, they start to get mm-hmm. yellow. What's red? Over, over a, a month. month. Okay, that's, yeah. And you're really in danger there. Yep. If you haven't had a customer to pay you in Bitcoin in over that's a month. That's when the cashiers are going to start forgetting how to do it. Yeah. And... Exactly. Oh, man, the um, <clears throat> Felix from Thailand, he's a huge power user. He's like uh-huh. you, or, you or us. And he set up many businesses, and he was complaining, like, oh, the, the map keeps turning yellow and red. Like, it looks bad. Yeah. It's like, yeah, well, there aren't that many people going there, and they're going to forget about it. Well, and there's also the problem of the cryptocurrency holders who will not spend it. They do not see the under they don't understand the value of spending cryptocurrency and they just hold on to it. Okay. So you may even have people in the area in Thailand or whatever who are cryptocurrency holders, but they're not going out and spending it and that does Well, they're worthless. I'm sorry. I just I don't care about if you're not going to use the the stuff then I'm I you might be a great guy, but I'm not yeah. interested. In, we don't connect on that level. Yeah. You know, it's well, boring. I don't want to insult the, the person. I want to persuade them. I want to explain to them that if, like we said earlier, if the guy hadn't bought the pizzas, Laszlo, you know, if he hadn't bought the, the two pizzas for 10,000 bitcoins back in the past. Now, somebody probably would have bought something eventually. But the fact that people spend cryptocurrency is what makes it worth something. The fact that it's useful and usable and is being used is why it's useful. Well, right? frankly, I, I don't think it's going to work out that people using Bitcoin is what makes it the most useful. I think... It's going to be machines using Bitcoin to get what they want that will be the most transactions. Like oh, Internet yeah. of Things? Yeah, like different applications, different data. Mm-hmm. What was that um, one you were telling me about? That it has like the most transactions? Like Weather SV. Okay, right. so this is a really cool app that's built in the, into the Bitcoin. Um, and it uses... It uses public weather data from from in different places over the world. This is like weather.com. Yeah, it uses it uses live weather data from sensors, I think weather.com. Hmm. And then it put it every hour it puts the data into the Bitcoin database. Why? Why? So that there's a permanent record that is unalterable of what the uh... weather was. Cuz you know, uh any any company that publishes a website with data they could change Where'd the data. Where'd you get data. that information? They could change the data over time. They could go back, hmm. send it down the memory hole. A hacker could come and, and change the data. Yeah. But not if it's in 
a permanent database that has a timestamp every yeah. 10 minutes. It's basically almost impossible to override the timestamp. That's interesting. Right. So that's just one example of an app. And so basically you can pay. I paid to activate Portsmouth and you could mm-hmm. pay to activate Keen. It was like, I don't know, $5 or something to get weather, the weather oh. data for a whole year. So I paid the fees to, to put that information in the database. Now, every hour, it's putting the weather information about Portsmouth, and people are activating cities all over the world. About that. Now, this is it's like a public infrastructure now for, mm-hmm. for weather. Yeah, but it still depends on people to use it. The whole sure. argument here is that oh, people, persuade people who sit there and are like, I have Bitcoin. I'm cool. It's like, yeah, that is cool. That's the first step. The first but step. then you got to use it. If you don't, now, I don't then blame what are we some- doing? Right. I, I don't blame somebody who's like, well, I, I don't want to use it. It's got a $3 fee. Okay, I got gotcha. you. No, use yeah. Dash or Bitcoin Cash or one of the other cryptocurrencies out there where the fees are very, very low. There are alternatives. And, of course, with any pay, there's the 10% back on both Dash and Bitcoin Cash via Dash back. And also, you Bitcoin can dial back. your fee down pretty low. I think Roger just had a bet with um, a big popular guy in Bitcoin, uh-huh. Tone Vase, about, yeah, I heard about this. oh, you can't send me Bitcoin for one cent. He could And he did. No, they it, cheated. Took, it took 10 years. Oh, really? Yeah, they, from what I understand, they had their people mined into a block. Uh, yeah, that okay. was, yeah. But there's more coming up here. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Check out that AnyPay map. It's pretty slick over at AnyPayMap.com. Mm-hmm. I like it. And uh, maybe you've got something in your area that you didn't even know about. It's possible. We're coming up here. Free Talk Live. And not to mention the shedding, I would vacuum the carpet three times a week. Frodo was scratching all night long, bouncing on the side of the bed, keeping me awake the whole entire night from all the scratching and chewing. It kind of makes you neurotic. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Mounds and mounds of fur all over the place. Come to Dynavite for help. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. If you want the dog to be healthy, you got to feed it something healthy. Dynavite is nutrition. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. Our vitamins and enzymes replace the nutrients cooked out of most commercial dog foods. He gobbles it up. He's not up all night scratching. His shedding is minimal, and it is such a pleasure to have my calm, relaxed, non-shedding puppy back. And I have to thank Dynavite for that. Don't let your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. Oh. Free Talk Live. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free. We're going to put whatever's on your mind. Our number is 855-450-FREE-LIKE-FREEDOM. It's 855-450-3733. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. With you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. Steven Zeiler. And Derek J. Steven and uh, Derek are here, courtesy of AnyPay.Global and HelpMeTakeBitcoin.com and AnyPayMap.com. And God, how many websites do you guys have now? They're all the same one. Oh, okay. it's, it's all AnyPay. <laughs> so if, if, if people are looking for us, the easiest place is in the App Store. Oh, Right. Because, uh, yeah, we haven't even mentioned that, that you can, like, download for iOS and for Android. Yeah, who goes app. to websites anymore? Just go to the I app store. I do. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, search AnyPay in the app store, download it. Then you can add your business to the map. Right from inside the app. Right inside the app. pretty cool. Maybe we should put the map in the app? I don't know. Why not? If you can, I mean, or at least link to it. doesn't seem right, because as a user, like, I'm someone. I'm not a business. I just True. want to go use a map. But people keep installing the app on their personal phone. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm going to recommend to a business owner when I meet with her. Hopefully within the next few days here, just so she can have it there and administer her her app from her phone. Well, yeah, yeah. we're from AnyPay, yeah. and you can find us in all kinds of places. It's awesome. I love it. All right, so uh, Derek J, you wanted to go to Talk Radio Hell tonight. Why? Why do you call only... it Talk Radio <laughs> Hell? <laughs> I don't. Know. I think Mark named it that because it almost always generates some of the worst callers bringing up uh, abortion as a topic is like you know one of the it's one of the most controversial topics right well, it's one of the most uh it's, well, it's one not of controversial topics. derek loves abortions <laughs> <laughs> no i i i'm torn about this i don't I, you know i the point of this it always story ends up being and why three it's men talking about abortions well it's every time we talk about abortions there's never a so, woman on the show so what anyway um the thing that's interesting is that this is Missouri's last abortion clinic. Also known as Misery, right? 
Uh, what they yeah. say. Misery. misery. Is that correct pronunciation? No, it's, it's oh, a mispronunciation. Okay. Oh, okay, got it. As in misery, like the state Loves of Love's company, yeah. yeah. Um, it's the last abortion clinic, and it may lose its license this week, and it probably will, Uh-oh. meaning that abortions are effectively illegal in Missouri now. Oh, boy. They, they, don't have a, they need a license to operate. And didn't they also just ban them in Alabama as well? Yes. Okay. Wow. And well, so, there's not going to be any more abortions then. Yeah, well... <laughs> There probably will be, and when you know, going with, underground with prohibition, I think that's why this story is interesting to me, and probably mm-hmm. to you guys as well. Is with anything that you prohibit, there will inevitably uh, emerge a black market for that yep. prohibited product, as or long service. as it's in demand. Yeah, and um, black market abortions probably not as good as the over-the-counter abortions. No. You know the. Um, no, we're talking about like dangerous implements compared to uh, you know what whatever it is they normally do. Well, except for rich people, like surely well, they could just go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, but probably they can have a private doctor that can do it just fine. Like, oh, yeah. uh, apparently that's how it's always been. Like, sure, uh, but the poor lady who you know got raped or knocked up by her boyfriend accidentally or whatever who doesn't want the child, she's going to go to a back alley clinic and uh, they're going to pull out a coat hanger or whatever. Well, and it's going to be horrible and dangerous. That sucks. Yeah. In a statement Tuesday, Planned Parenthood said Missouri's health department is, quote... I mean, do you want El Negrito to give you your uh, your abortion? The guy we were talking about in Venezuela? No. No. Nobody wants that. Afterward, he will extort you. <laughs> sorry, I uh, didn't need to interrupt you. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm just getting a bad image. Um, the health department in Missouri is refusing to renew its uh-huh. annual license to provide abortion in the state to, to Planned Parenthood. Wow. And if the license is not renewed by May 31st, that's in a couple of days, Missouri would become the first state without a functioning abortion clinic since 1973. Wow. When Roe v. Wade was decided. 45 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Planned Parenthood filed a lawsuit requesting a restraining order against the state, mm. hoping to restore the license and avoid service disruption. What town is it? Does it mention where this place um, is? The article may name okay. the town, but I yeah, have it, not a lot, seen a lot it of times listed. like the the, uh, the the article starts with uh, like a news St. It'll Louis, say Missouri. T- okay, yeah. So um, I can see the targeted ads now for abortion tourism flooding into the Facebook into pages on Missouri. You know, like yeah, that'll well, come to Kansas. We right? We haven't really seen that. That hasn't been a part of my lifetime. Like I imagine there were people who are older than us who knew a time when abortion was illegal and women got them and they were dangerous and they died. I've heard stories about coat hangers. There was like a dry cleaner that their um, coat hangers used to come with a, you know, dry cleaners like put their name or their slogan or whatever on the dry paper part of the dry cleaner hanger. It said like never again on the uh, coat hanger as a, as a reference, not to the Holocaust, but to the time when abortion was illegal and people used coat hangers oh my god so we've never experienced that in our lifetime but is it possible that that is coming again it could be for some in missouri it seems they're running out of options i can totally see a huge religious fundamentalism revival all across america you know you think this thing happens to to civilizations from time to time? Do you have like to be we're religious? Our way. I mean, no. Wait a minute. You don't have to be religious to be against abortion. No. Right. You, well, I'm. Ta- I mean, I'm not saying you're no. wrong. That could happen with a religious fundamentalist revival. i But seems like people are moving away from religion generally in the United States, right? Like, aren't yeah. aren't uh, young people aren't attending church as often? Even the ones that are religious. I had an article about this, but we didn't go into it on the air at all. But it was in my show prep a few weeks or a few months ago, uh, where the statistics are showing that young people, millennials, for for instance, even Gen Z, once they get out of their household, so like if they were in a religious household growing up, as soon as they get out and they go off to college or, you know, move out for whatever reason, they just don't go to church anymore. The numbers have dropped off from what I understand. So they may still have harbored their own belief systems, but they're not going into the organized religion. Well, we'll see what happens when this giant, like, fiat currency debt bubble collapses, like, and how the society changes and how people panic and, like, 
You think how, they'll how go, they go back to God? In they case? really might. I mean, it, it could be a big step back for for liberalism. Could be as were, we know it. Were you raised in a religious household? I was raised at, in a, I guess, a Baptist church. Really? Yeah. Uh, it was Southern Baptist. Is it Southern Baptist in Austin? When, when I was, well, I mean, Austin's a very large city. They yeah. have all kinds of churches. Okay. Um, but is this, Southern Baptist a particular branch, or no, is it just anyone? I don't think in, so. Okay. I, I think I thought uh, it was, but I don't know. Well, the church that I that I was uh, a part of was a Baptist church until I was maybe six or seven, mm-hmm. and, and then it became a non-denominational church. Oh, and is it, it one of the ones with the humongous bathtub at the front where they would like what? completely submerge? I I was uh, the you mean for the what is that called baptism? The baptism, yeah. It was a hot tub. Are you, yeah, it was just like straight up kidding? hot tub, like. Like they went to the hot tub store, <laughs> <laughs> but it was embedded into the stage. It yeah, was like, okay. <laughs> it was nice. Huh. Yeah, they had jets so bad. and stuff. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But uh, babies, all, all Jesus s- jets. No, no, no. We're not Catholic, so the baby, like, uh, it. Ba- babies are baptized in the Baptist religion when they're not baptized. You have to wait until you're like thirteen, fourteen. You have to choose it. Oh. You have to choose. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So they say. I mean, he was basically chosen for me. Okay. I didn't really know what was going on. Five beliefs that set Southern Baptists apart from American Baptists. So apparently there is uh, a difference here. So it's not just being from the South. Like you could have a Southern Baptist here in New Hampshire. I guess. I, right. I mean, presumably. I think no they're Southern probably Baptist called that here. because of the Southern, like the Baptists from the South have these different distinguishing properties. So are are Baptists generally against abortions is that why you brought this up baptists are against like dancing and alcohol oh, and, like, yeah. all <laughs> oh, indulgence so they're That's against right. they're against sex so you can't have an abortion because you can't have sex for recreation right it's, only married people can can have sex right yeah yeah but not for fun oh even as a married you couple, can't have fun wow that is, yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty much the stance. I, I had a friend, I had several friends who were kicked out of a Baptist high school. And you can't really, have fun. Yeah, no, it's fun is not no good. School dance, no dancing, no like music. Definitely no dancing. Jesus, not like fun apparently. All right, so we'll get into it here uh, a little bit further on abortion Jesus and the is a serious man. Well, according to an article I've got here, though, there's uh, an Illinois abortion clinic ten minutes away from uh, from, from St. Louis. Louis. Rank yeah. it, raking in the dough now, I bet. So uh, it, they'll probably be all right, at least in St. Louis. But the people in the middle of the state, they're going to have to travel. They're going to uh, have to build a wall. A bit of a waste. More on the way here. Hey, don't give them any ideas. 855 450 free. It's Free Talk Live. You dial toll free if you want to join us here. Our number for you is 855 450 free, like freedom. That's 855 450 3733. We have the Discord on air call in line rooms over at Discord. Dot LRN dot FM. Now, if you're trying to reach the crypto market or perhaps you want to spread mass awareness of your cryptocurrency technology, either way, you ought to have a communications company that specializes in that field. You know, you can't just hire your average PR firm or whatever. Leveraging 35 plus different brands, part of the investor brand network and more than 5,000 downstream distribution partners cryptocurrency wire combines the power of specialization with mass market reach with the help of cryptocurrency wire you can start connecting with crypto friendly journalists and more than 1.6 million followers their commitment is to get the most eyes possible on your big news while it's still fresh whether domestic or international they can reach 56 different countries and provide translation services which is super important so if your company is an important, relevant newsmaker, you need someone that specializes in the field to get your message heard. Cryptocurrencywire.com. We've even used them here at Free Talk Live. Cryptocurrencywire.com. As we continue with your calls and thoughts, we can talk more about uh, the abortion clinic in Missouri that may have to close its doors uh, it's the last one in the state, and the state government uh, goons are saying they're not going to renew the license. Yeah, it looks like that's what's going to happen. Let's go to Ryan, though. He's in Manchester, New Hampshire, watching us on YouTube. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, guys. Thanks hey. for taking my call. Welcome. I just want to say Stephen and Derek are probably some of the coolest Free Talk Live guests I've ever heard. Huge fan of Annie Pay. They're really nice guys out there in Portsmouth. I agree. Um, so I just, yeah, right? They're, just wish they didn't live in Portsmouth. Um, <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, West Manchester's where it's at. Nah. Um, keen. <laughs> yeah. 
So Go ahead. Uh, abortion has been one of the one of the topics that's really pressed my libertarianism to the to the brink, right? It's such a challenging issue. And I just wanted to get your opinions on what I think is kind of the crux of the argument, right? Which is when does a fetus become a baby? I kind of <sighs> think of what Ron Paul said when he became pro life. You know, as a physician, he saw a seven month abortion and mm-hmm. as the aborted fetus was being taken out, it was actually crying. And they just kind of put it into a bucket mm. until it stopped crying. And there's a you know a huge chance that that could have been a viable baby, but because the mother decided to abort it, right? It, it, it is that is that a murder? It's it's tough to say, right? And if it is, then what? Well, then I suppose that baby would have had its rights violated, right? Its right to life, right to property. And who who exactly is standing up for those uh, th- that person's rights? Well, I guess that's the question, right? Well, if nobody cares about you, do you even have any rights? Yes, I would say so, definitely. Well, yeah, so, right so how? How is that possible? Well, I suppose oh, that's a good question. I guess I would just view property rights as intrinsic to being human not necessarily something that's based on age or consciousness, right? Because we wouldn't consider someone who's in a vegetative state, like someone who got into a car accident to no longer have rights. Well, if they don't have any friends or family members to decide who, you know, if if someone's going to pull the plug, if they've got no connections or anyone close to them, um, is it, whose decision is it that they live or die? I mean, who who's supposed to put themselves out to save this life yeah i'm not sure yeah and who has an obligation to save another one's life anyway like functionally rights are only things that you can secure for yourself and if you're unable to secure your own life then you know you you just die So I'm going to answer the question. Uh, you know, it's been asked. I wanted you guys to have a uh, shot at it here. I don't know. Don't know what. I don't what know the answer question? to the question. Life, the question was when does life when does life begin? You know, that was his original question, right, Ryan? And I'm going to say I don't know. Oh, it's that inception. That's the answer. I mean, it's pretty clear. Yeah, but when does it become a human being? It, at inception. That's okay. when it's See, life. I, don't know. I mean, you you combine the Doesn't two. Doesn't look like a human. Oh, well, a lot of people don't look human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The the reality is pretty simple. They, you know, it, human life begins at inception. Mm. People have rights from the beginning. But the the thing is, if if no one's there to fight for your rights, if if nobody cares about you and you die, then that's very sad. But that's what happens. Ryan, what do you think should right, happen but- to uh, to somebody who aborts a fetus? Well, see, that's that, that, that's a tough question, right? Because should it be government prohibited or should it be you know privately shunned it's 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 tough to say what 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 the right decision is i i would suppose if if we can agree that a baby uh, or a fetus is a baby and a baby of course I can't agree is protected with that. under the law uh, it, yeah great so then i don't think you would agree with that conclusion but if yeah. if someone did like if we as a society did agree that a baby a fetus is a baby then that fetus should be protected and sh- should have the right to not be aborted. Why? I mean, why should any person well, be- have that right? I mean, let's say they're a four-year-old. You know, what what right does that four-year-old have to to self to uh, preservation beyond what their themselves or their family can provide? Well, because that that four-year-old owns themselves, and they mm, have I the don't right know. To yeah, but if they can't them. provide for themselves, own is a verb, right? That. How in what way does a four year old own themselves? Well, in the, in the same way that you own yourself and I own myself. No, I I put my own food in my mouth. I put my own roof over my head. Four year olds don't do you that. You can stuff. conceptualize the idea of it. A four year old probably cannot. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. To what extent does a four year old take ownership of their own life? And is able to sustain themselves. They really are not able to yeah, I mean, sustain can, themselves. They can choose which toy to play with on the playground, but that's about it. 
I think the uh, the the answer that someone might give, I'm not saying this is what I would say, would be that uh, one should empathize with the child that has no parents or has no one who loves or cares about that that child, that one should be able to put oneself in that child's shoes and say, in that circumstance, one would want someone to swoop them up and, and take care of them, whoever that person I think that's a be. that seems nice on the surface, but There's might nothing be a, wrong with it, that. I think there is something wrong with really? that. It's self-destructive. Because if that's your position, then you've got that times infinity in the in the case of, of all, all the, the abortions, in case of all the foster kids, in the case yeah. of a humane society and right. all the kittens that need your help. And I all mean, the people we, who want welfare can, can't take care of themselves. If you take mm-hmm. that position, it's self-destructive. Mm. There's no end to it. They couldn't do it. You can't they couldn't do it. save the whole world. You can only save yourself and the people around you. Well, right. I, frankly, prohibition, I mean, but fuck, like. What's useful to do if if you want to limit abortions? Is it even useful to ban them? No, or, no, it just no it's ground. not. Like, so it doesn't even matter. This whole discussion of when does life is created doesn't matter at all. Yeah, it's, that's true. how do you reduce abortions if you're if you're against them? And obviously, prohibition is not a way to reduce. Things. I think the best bet you got there is persuasion and uh, maybe thank money. You for the call tonight, you could buy the baby, Ryan. I appreciate it. But again, you know, you're gonna run out of money real fast. Uh, Because there's a lot of kids that need help out there. Thanks uh, for that. More coming up here. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Dynavite for life. Pick up two tubes of Doggo Suds. Get the third tube free. Peppermint, tea tree, lavender, Doggo Sud shampoo. Made with all natural coconut, jojoba, aloe. Great for healthy skin and soft, shiny coats. But no itchy, harsh chemicals. Lather up. Rinse away. Try Doggo Suds. Buy two, get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You are invited here to join us. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, like freedom. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. 855-450-3733. Liberty.menu. It is a place, and it's exclusively for individuals who reject the initiation of force and those who agree to abide by the ethics of the non-aggression principle. Liberty-minded folks like libertarians, voluntarists have for a long time been looking for a site like Liberty.menu, a a useful business directory, basically, for liberty-friendly businesses. And also, if you're an events coordinator or creator or a digital content uh, creator, then you also belong on Liberty.menu. Basically, if you want people to know, people in the Liberty movement, about the thing that you do, post it on Liberty.menu because it's free. So the only cost is whatever time it takes you to go there, create an account, and post your stuff. And And it's fun. Despite it being free, it's also got a very high signal-to-noise ratio. A lot of the stuff Mm -hmm. that's posted there is valuable stuff that I actually want to see. Right, there's not a bunch of junk. I'm not scrolling through endlessly looking for good stuff. Right, and there is a bit of a social networking aspect to it, too, so you can connect with the people that use the site, and there's ratings and reviews and all that. And And badges, which are really fun. If you're still hanging on... If you're still hanging on to Facebook just for the uh, ability to create events and and let people know about them, then you should really check out Liberty Menu. That's what I was actually telling uh, Rich Paul, who's been weaning himself off of Facebook recently, and he wanted Me to create, he wanted to create an event for something. I was like, well, why don't you just create it on Liberty Menu and then post it on the social exactly. network? Exactly. Post the link to your event on Liberty Menu wherever social networks you you hang out. Right. I'll tell you what, I deleted the Facebook app from my phone. When? And uh, like two weeks ago. Congratulations. I did yeah. that years ago. What about the other ones? Not- did you have any of their other apps? Because they've got like three or four. I have, I have Instagram, which is actually very useful for me. But I mean life. like the Facebook branded ones because there's Messenger, there's the Facebook no, I pages. Have I have Facebook pages. Mm-hmm. So you inspired me years ago. I think you deleted the Facebook well, app. Well, Derek's talking so, about spying. Like he doesn't like it because it spies and whatnot. Oh, but, yeah, it does. But I deleted it because everyone left there is worth like. It's worthless. Like mm. n- none of the conversation it's is junk. any good, it's and junk. the only good the only good person is the, is this one memester mm-hmm. who's totally awesome, Lou Fien. You oh, know? we know him. Yeah, he's he's great. He's the only reason to be on Facebook. Doesn't he opinion. post his memes somewhere else? He must. Yeah, you should ask him. He should post it on into the meme chain, or get like um, like I've got a Telegram channel 
where I can post whatever social media update that I want. And it automatically, because of IFTTT.com, if this, then that, oh, it yeah. shoots it out to my Mastodon and my Twitter at awesome. the same time. So I don't have to go and update three or four different social media. I don't have Facebook anymore, so it doesn't shoot it there. But, you know, that's a way to, like, simplify your life. Beautiful. Right? That's cool. Just connect that stuff together. Maybe IFTT has a post to the memo.cache or to the Bitstagram, you know, the permanent If it has media. Uh, like a web hooks. So IFTTT has integrated things for certain sites, but something that's newer like that, they probably don't have a specific integration for that yet. Mm-hmm. But if it's got things like web hooks, which is like some sort of programming behind the scenes that you can trigger things with, yeah. uh, then you can do it. So that's how it does with Mastodon. The Mastodon is not specific to IFTTT. They don't have an integration with that. But since Mastodon has webhooks, there's an instruction set that you can follow to get it to, to work. Cool. So, yeah. Love webhooks. Yeah. Yeah, webhooks yeah. are the best. So um, check it out over at liberty.menu. We're going to go back to your calls and thoughts here. We got Gene. He's the Christian anarchist Yay. on our Discord call in lines in Tennessee. Hey, yeah, I want to challenge this idea that uh, rights are dependent on whether somebody cares about you. Nice. Because, nice. because I don't believe that's the case. And if it were the case, then if there was some homeless person in the street, you could easily go up there, just stab the heck out of them and walk away because he has no rights. But you could if no one cared, cared about them. You, I mean, what happens when a homeless person who no has no family, right, who, who, a homeless person has no family that anybody knows of. Nobody knows who the person is. They don't have any friends except for whoever might be in the homeless camp with them uh, at the time. And if the, the cops find a dead homeless person, how much effort do they really put into solving that crime? If they don't care about them, none. I am not saying that you couldn't get away with violating that person's rights, but he still possesses those rights by the fact that he is a human being. Now, whether you can get away with violating his rights is a totally different argument. Okay. So, so the rights exist. They exist. Well, they by exist the in our minds. They- I mean, they're 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 basically an agreement between humans, right? I mean, that's what rights are, and they're a good one. They're a good agreement. And if you would if you would ask that homeless guy if he has a right to exist, he would say yes. But if he didn't have the power to stop you from killing him, that doesn't mean that his rights did not exist. It only means that you are guilty of violating his rights. That's hmm. all it means. Do you think that a person because has you to just say Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm waiting. Well, do you think that a person has to at least be able to conceive of rights in order to have them? Like no, this. because then then it means that mentally retarded people don't have rights. So well, um, uh, I know I know people that have mentally retarded children. They take good care. What of What about right. dogs? Protect but them. so those but people with mental disabilities have families who care about them. So maybe those those rights are sort of like um, what's it called? Not transcendental. Their families you know are about. protectors of their rights. R- rights That's are true. not inherent to people. Rights are a social construct that we give to each other. And it's a good one. That's it's a great thing. That's what you're claiming. That's what you're claiming. But you could be wrong. See, well, now, I'm not wrong. Thing. I'm not wrong about that. Look, <laughs> rights don't... It's, it's a meaningless wrong. thing. It doesn't exist in the actual physical world. It's an idea. For it's anyone. a social thing that we, we give to each other, and they're great. For anyone to claim that they're right on things is kind of a lot of hubris because you don't know for sure you're right. That is your belief system, and you believe you're right. I have my belief system, and I believe I'm right, but I at least admit that I could be wrong. Well, how could you? Okay. You're not even admitting how that it's possible. How can you prove that, that rights exist if what you're saying is, is rights exist? I want some evidence. Give how me. Can how it? can you measure a right? Like what instrument would you use to, to, to observe a right— and measure it using like some kind of scientific process. Well, you, with rights, you're not going to get scientific process. Just like with love, you're not going to get scientific process. Try and prove through science that love exists. Well, you're you could at the very process. least, I think, show chemical changes with love, right? Yeah. Like you could measure that in someone's body yeah, when can, they're. You can show that by eating sugar too, or you know. Well, or, yeah, but yeah, these are all observable. Right. These are all observable changes. Rights are a concept. Right. Okay. So great. Yeah. So there we go. Love is measurable, perhaps. No, it it isn't measurable. I'm saying it is. Well, there you go. Okay. Ask any science 
scientists how they're going to measure love and they're going to come up with they're, they're not going to come up with anything. they're going to have some experiments so just, they would run just because you say it can be measured doesn't make it so now rights came from somewhere now they're either uh, I believe they come from our creator by the very nature of the fact that we're human. But some people believe that rights come from the fact that we have a social construct that uh, allows for people to I- imagine these things. Okay, so either way, the rights are there because of your humanity, the fact that you're human. Now, s- some people want to extend that to animals, but I don't think that you have a very good argument there. But you do have a good argument for saying that humans have rights because of their humanity. If that's the case, then you can't say that only they only possess. Isn't that them circular reasoning? Yeah, like but humans? if there was only one human, you wouldn't have rights because they're things that we give to each other. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Gene, I did just you know, quick search here. IFLScience.com uh, headline: Brain scans can now detect if you're in love. The story from I don't know when, but uh, it says here that after scanning the brains of a hundred students, a third of whom were hopelessly in love with someone, uh, scientists have managed to reveal some of the changes in brain activity that are related to love. Those smitten with someone showed increased neuronal activity in several brain regions. So I mean, this is a simple matter of uh, you know scanning well, brains. Well, of maybe, people. maybe it would be with well, rights. Maybe that's a thing that you can observe when when someone's granting a right to another. <laughs> maybe you like, can. All, science hasn't gone down those, this way yet. I'll bet you any money that those brain scan results could also be duplicated, showing something else. So to say that they're conclusively. Uh, it's just a study. Love, it's just a, a study. Stretch. Thank you for the it's call tonight, Gene. I do appreciate We have a lot to discussion. learn about the brain. Yeah, that's true. 855 450 free. That's, and, you know, like you said, maybe uh, they'll discover that rights are observable in, the, in, in brains, but not yet, at least. Uh, more on the way here. This is Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want here. The toll free number. Is 855-450 free. Even in these remaining moments, there's enough time for you if you dial in now. 855-450-3733. Don't forget to uh, head over to see more of Derek J. and Stephen on anypay.global or helpmetakebitcoin.com. You guys have a pretty active uh, AnyPay Twitter account. Uh, where where else is AnyPay on like social medias? You know, the so best place people should really find us is in the App, in the store. app store. In the App Store. Yeah, just yeah. get the app. See what it's all about. You know, this talk. Just see it. Try it out. <laughs> it's very easy and intuitive. If you're a business owner and you want to take cryptocurrency, but even if you're not a business owner, no. if you're like, it's the a, easiest it's... way to accept cryptocurrency because there's a lot of other people they're saying, oh well. I hate pulling up my wallet to, mm-hmm. to receive money because then everyone can see how much money I have. Mm. I don't want that. Well, with any pay, it hi- it it's not a wallet. It doesn't show how much money you have, and right. it's really easy. It and just also allows you to receive. Some other people, they're like, "Oh, well, I don't want to carry around my money on my phone. That's dangerous. I want to keep it in a safe." Well, with any pay, you can receive money on your right. phone. It goes right into Straight your into safe, safe or right into your bank. Smart. Yeah. It's the easiest so, way to receive money, especially so this is for, for everybody, is what you're saying. Anybody that wants to accept cryptocurrency payments, period. Easiest way to accept yeah. cryptocurrency payments, and it supports 10 different cryptocurrencies. So yeah. it probably has the one you'd like. Yeah, because I was starting to say recently that it's not just for brick and mortars. I mean, that's where you all started was focusing on like the brick and mortar businesses. But like if you're a service provider, if you're a plumber or, you know, you're coming over to somebody's house, just punch in the amount on any pay and then they can pay you with crypto. Yeah, and and it's way easier than other wallets. And the money goes right into your Trezor or your exchange or wherever you tell the money to go. So cool. You know, or if you if you own a business and you have you have uh, employees who are out in the field collecting payments. Yep. Well, you don't want them getting access to the money. No. You want them to just receive it, and then the money goes into your wallet. So yeah, you can have this installed on more than one device, uh, and it's super easy to do. Just search for any pay in the. Or is it, is it, are there other words they should add to it? Because I know any there's pay. any pay. You'll search find for it. any pay. Okay. You're gonna find it. You'll know it's the one with other, the cryptocurrencies. There's that other. It's AnyPay. the number one rated, okay. high, uh, m- number one most downloaded any pay app. There's a, a beautiful checkmark logo. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, mm-hmm. Any pay, check them out. I love it. I use it all the time here in Keene, the crypto mecca. Uh, so let's go to Brian on the line in Wisconsin. You're on Free Talk Live, listening via TuneIn. Hi, how's it going, guys? Hey, Brian, you're on the air. Hello. Yep. Are you there? Can yeah, you hear me? Yeah, we're right here. We got you loud and clear. Hopefully, you can hear us. Yeah. All right. Um. So in uh, I think it was the previous uh, segment. You guys were uh, talking about how rights could be measured by how much other people care about you. 
Yeah. Maybe to some degree. We're saying that other uh, people give you those rights. Okay. <clears throat> so, sorry, I got the sniffles. Uh, so, I just wanted to know what your thoughts were about, like, when abortions happen and maybe the father doesn't want the child to be aborted oh. and, and cares about, like, maybe deeply in love with this child that isn't born yet. Man, that's tragic. Well, the, that that's the case where someone cares deeply about the person whose rights are being violated. I think that person would have a real claim for a, a crime having been committed against them mean, or the person. I'm actually, like, I am pro-choice, but, I mean, that must suck if that does happen that sucks a lot isn't that a crime i mean i would say you would have a you'd have a good claim that someone uh the pay you know i think these these are actually going into courts recently i read about some cases where guys were were suing the 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 girl that they knocked up and and i think it's working its way up yeah for having an abortion when they said that they don't want it and, and and who knows what the common law is going to really say on this. And Derek might be right that this is a crime because this guy does care and he's an immediately immediate family member. Well, personally, look, I, I find it pretty ridiculous that a guy thinks that he has some sort of say over what happens inside another person's body. I didn't hey, look, say that. I'm not saying you said that. Yeah. Uh, but that's bolt basically what these guys are suggesting is that they should have some sort of say over whether or not this woman can make a decision who they decided to you know impregnate yeah it was their fault look guys you got to avoid sticking it in crazy right well exactly there's consequences that come from that yeah and uh, and this is one of them and look uh you know, either way, the guy never has to carry this thing to term, so they don't have to deal it's with. It's not whatever. a health risk. For, I mean, this could literally yeah. kill the uh-huh. the girl. They, she could die. And in history, so many women have died from childbirth. Like, it well, really I is. Think that's a, pretty unlikely in modern day. Um, what about this though? Hmm. Do you think that I don't know? It's uh, since pregnancy is such a dangerous thing and could be a health hazard that a guy could have the right to terminate the child at all. Absolutely. No not. way. Wait, what do, wait like, what do you mean? No one has a right to stick a sharp instrument inside the or, body or of a another. Pill, let's say. Uh, no, you can't force anyone to do anything. Yeah, you, you can't commit fraud against someone. You so gave you up the sperm. It's out of your hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have the right to not the ejaculate Rubicon. in right, certain places. Lot, guys. Thank you for the call tonight. There, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's other call. ways you can ejaculate if that's what you want to do. But we can't talk about that on the radio in, in great detail. Uh, but yeah, thank you for that. So, St. Louis, you had this story, Derek yeah. J. Do you want uh, more? I, if, the, if there's more that you feel is worth sharing, because I've got the story here, I don't know if they cover it in yours, where they're interviewing the clinics in Wichita and in Granite City, Illinois, uh, where they're saying here at, at Trust Women Clinic in Wichita, they already are so busy, they have to fly in doctors. Oh, my goodness. So this is going to, they're like, uh, they don't know where they're going to find the time. They, they got to raise the prices. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that seems way they can to expand the, the operation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Get this out of the hands of Planned Parenthood. That's probably the first thing to do because it's wrong that anyone who doesn't want to be paying for this service is forced to. That's true. That's and, kind of the libertarian. I think the the best libertarian position on this is that the government should not be involved in paying for or prohibiting abortion. Yeah, I think a lot of pieces would fall into place if you got that out of the way because then you've got – um, church groups that would go to these women who say like, "Hey, look, you want to have an abortion, right?" Mm-hmm. But we'll, we've got a bunch of people with who donate a lot of money to our church, and they would just gladly pay Take you to it. keep this baby, bring it to term. We'll put it up for a nice family for a, adoption or whatever, and then you get some. It's weird to say this, but you get some financial incentives behind mm-hmm. actually keeping a life. Yeah, alive. but then that's going to change you, people's minds. But then you it get will. financial incentive to just have more babies like if you were like oh, not necessarily oh well this church community is going to take care of me if i get pregnant yeah no and no. make them feel guilty that's what you have now you have an endless supply of funds in the form of planned parenthood and federal funding to which give is abortions. mostly private funding planned parenthood is that I true it, I don't that's know. probably that's right. true. it's like sure. a small Even, fraction is yeah i was gonna say All that right. i think huh. planned parenthood will be just fine if okay. uh, it's if like they npr exactly uh, you know, they right. don't need government I didn't realize funding. that they don't need taxes okay i don't know what the portion is i honestly don't but i've i've supported them privately when i've gone i needed std tests done i've gone to planned parenthood they've nice. been great 
Cool. Yeah, me too. They got other things they do, right? Like it's not just abortion is okay. just one of the things that they do. I guess the the point was I would like to see more of a market for abortions because I think we'll get a more ethical and more mm. um, open, transparent system mm-hmm. with, that produces better outcomes. Well, if you want a market, people. you got to get rid of occupational licensing. Like right. Missouri, to it's allow this, more it's this to license concept, and yeah. we got to get rid of that whole concept altogether. Absolutely, as a bigger problem. But it, yeah. it applies to abortions here, and it's awful. Yeah, I think that's uh, it's true. And uh, by the way, we can hear Rich Paul talking loudly in the background. I don't know if our uh, if <laughs> if our listeners can at, at home, but coming up in just a few moments on our video feeds over at dlive.lrn.fm and at uh, twitch.lrn.fm. I believe Rich and Aria are going to be coming up for an episode of Freer Talk Live coming cool. up here in moments where they can talk more about sexual things Yay. Uh, that we cannot cover on broadcast radio. <laughs> and uh, they can say words that will we they? cannot say. Do they, though? Oh, I suspect they will. They oh, will. Great. Oh, they're planning on it. I mean, it. you uh, were sure. on the show with Aria They've once. They've been saving yeah. it we all day. We didn't get that into it. Yeah, but you got you got a little more explicit okay. for sure. Good. Uh, on that show because it's on the it's internet only so we don't have to deal with the pesky fcc uh getting in the way and uh there's still just a few things you can't say but there's way more that you can on these different platforms so be sure if you haven't yet to go and follow us on dlive.lrn.fm and uh that is our newest video streaming platform it's purportedly decentralized but we're not so sure about that and then uh, twitch.lrn.fm as well i'll just say it's not it's not looking that way no at this point I would love for it to become decentralized. I don't know how, how easy How are you that... supposed to do that? Though? I don't know. It's tricky. It's very tricky. Live video streaming, streaming platform? Yeah. Well, there's, there's all different components that you decentralize in different ways. It's probably doable, but I'm not a programmer, so I you know, don't have enough experience with like... Also, decentralization is a gradient. Mm, right. Now, like you... How decentralized are is you? It? Yeah, yeah, and different, yeah. different aspects of centralization. These are good ideas. We don't have time to talk about them tonight. But hey, guys, thanks for coming all the way out here to uh, Beautiful Keen and seeing us thank you it's an honor thank you it's a pleasure always and you guys are back once a month so maybe we'll have you back after the, all the festivals are done in, yeah. in June Fork Fest oh right? wow because we're going to be seeing you then we'll, we'll have you on from Fork Fest sure, of course yeah. and uh, see you online in the meantime at freetalklive.com I want to tell you about my favorite cryptocurrency wallet, Edge Wallet at edge.app. Edge is the wallet I use more than any other, and that was true long before Edge Wallet became a sponsor of Free Talk Live. Edge Wallet allows you to buy, sell, trade, and securely hold your cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, tokens, Monero, Ripple, Dash, Bitcoin Cash, and more. It's available for both Android and iOS, and you can download it via the Play or App Store or via Edge Wallet's website, edge.app. Secure your freedom with Edge Wallet. Free Talk Live has found that though U.S. financial institutions are prohibited from doing business with foreign gambling websites, it's not illegal for U.S.-based Internet users to gamble on those sites. People have been using VPNs or virtual private networks to connect to sites like games.bitcoin.com and play games with Bitcoin Cash. Games.bitcoin.com features poker, blackjack, roulette, craps, keno, slots, and dice. You can conduct your own investigation at games.bitcoin.com.